potential. What a discovery, a psychoreactive substance. Do you know what this equipment is used for? Boggle or Super Mario Brothers? We'll have fun! Yeah! Yes, you're doing a really quite good work there. My friend, don't be a jerk. We've got no choice. Call the Ghostbusters. Super Jackpot! Welcome to Extraplasm Podcasts. It's the only podcast on the internet that believes that the next Hasbro release is a bake your own giant Twinkie kit because all I know about it right now is it's big. Joining me on the podcast this week and back for the first time since the Ghostbusters Afterlife commentary is friend of the show, an awesome person, the person who has all of the stories regardless of how ghostly or gory, Jason Fitzsimmons of Ghostbusters News. How are you, Jason? Hello, I am doing, I'm doing swell, doing it, doing great. I mean, we had uh, that big tease upon a tease that we're going to talk about. Uh, we probably have a couple of things that we need to tease ourselves this week. Uh, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited you're here, too. I also just realized that for the first time in the history of the podcast, I've broken the intro because I forgot to say the part where I say I'm Jim Maritato, a.k.a. McManiac on the Internet. Uh, so if you weren't sure who I am. That's who I am. You already know who Jason is. So if you're listening out there, great. Um, I don't know who would have not known that I was who I am, but this is what happens when we do the podcast live as opposed to editing it together, folks. So um, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the headliner this week, so got my got my introduction first. Yeah, it's fine. I'd like last. I think it was a couple weeks ago that um, John Urkaba flipped the tables and began asking me questions. Uh, so he was like, I'm taking over the podcast now. So this is what's happening. We've gotten into a year and now just strange things that break formats and uh, mess with the dynamic of the podcast happen because I want them to sometimes it's fun um, to change things up. So I like it, John. He he like John, John, like Larry David. Yeah, he flipped it. He flipped it on you. He was he in did. control. Wow. He did. I had no hand in this relationship, Jerry. Um, no hands. I, I don't, I'm not even sure if that's the right reference to be making in this context. Well, you, but <laughs> you jump from curb to, to Seinfeld, but that, that's fine. I did. Uh, and to be fair, I've been watching a lot of Seinfeld. But only in small bits. I, I have fallen down this horrible YouTube habit of, of like not watching full blown episodes of anything, but just watching like YouTube clips that are like, here's all the times that um, uh, that they talked about the big salad on Seinfeld, like in a, a, a you know, montage of clips that I, I just leave on the background while I'm doing other things. So I have that fresh in my brain, to be fair. But um. We can also talk about this in a few minutes, but the other reason Seinfeld's in my brain is because I felt like the Hasbro thing that happened last week was a bit of a show about nothing. <laughs> and, oh. And Seinfeld did that oh. better. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I mean, that that's up for debate, which I know we're going to touch on. I, I'm just going to tell you right now, I like the Hasbro thing. I like the tease upon the tease. I like the slow drip content as a content creator myself. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to get that out the door. I, just I like Seinfeld. We'll, we'll, we will, we will end up having, we're going to have a, a conversation about this mm -hmm. thing in a few minutes. Uh, but, um, you know, I figured it would be nice to say hello first and see how things are in Canada. Are you all still not yet frozen? Uh, does the freezing begin soon? It, it's getting, it's getting cool out. It's getting cold. Uh, I mean, typically for us, we usually see that first snowfall, uh, usually that the Halloween weekend, but it may come a little bit earlier this year. It feels like it could any day. I was thinking about this before you came on that. I don't know if it's on purpose, but sometimes when we do episodes, it's often that you come on relatively quickly after Chris Stewart's been on. He was on last week and I was like, maybe mm. there's just like these weird Canadian blocks <laughs> like in the podcast. It's just like, hey, well, we're going to do three Canadian guests back to back. I, to I back. would like to think that that like like Chris Stewart is highbrow and I'm lowbrow and my appearance <laughs> just kind of centers you out a little bit. Yeah, well, I think we could get Matt, Matt, the Matt Prov. He can come in in the middle and moderate the two things, okay. right? Like that's that would work. Uh, he's another Canadian person who's been on the podcast. Sure. So that could work. Yeah, Likes Alf. I mean, who doesn't like Alf? <laughs> exactly. Likes Alf. I'm not really sure that Chris and I talked about anything particularly highbrow last week. We did a lot of talking about. Weird Dude, Ghostbusters man, I, I, I listened to it. I mean, just just uh, whenever Chris talks like. I, I can't compete with him. He his, his just his speech pattern alone. It intimidates me. He's so well spoken. Such a good guy. <laughs> I enjoy talking with him. And it was fun to uh, have a, a bit of a banter about that. I'll ask your opinion on this because I know that you've looked at it. What, what do you feel about this? Like Ghostbusters crossover with weight training stuff? Because um, I still I know last week we had an episode where we talked about what was and wasn't weird. And I kind of still left that conversation feeling like it was a little weird. But what do you think about it? Well, uh, I mean, since that time, um, 
who is who's making that? What's their company there? EHP G- Labs. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So since that time, they have revealed that they're also going to be doing like shaker cups and like collectible cups and everything. Gotcha. So with that said, I don't know if, if you guys covered that last week or not, but I, I know that was something they just kind of developed. That said, that brings in your more casual fan. That brings in your more casual collector, right? That's not necessarily going to be taking the protein and the supplements and all that. Um, I'm I'm all for Ghostbusters being almost on anything like I, I'm that type of guy that I don't really think that you can kind of diminish a brand too much. Um, I mean, back in the eighties, we had what, like real Ghostbusters shaving kits for children that they were just plastic and you know, there was <laughs> yeah, no razor blade. I don't yeah. know if you can really milk the brand too hard in this day and age. <laughs> um, and when it comes to Ghostbusters, consumables make sense for given Twinkies and given the you know, marshmallows and ecto cooler yeah. slime. Uh, but yeah, the, the biggest thing when I think of Ghostbusters fans, and this is not, uh, a slight to them. <laughs> I'm just thinking about me in a flight suit too. I'm not the target demographic, you know, yeah. when it comes yeah. to, uh, I mean, I, I've been to the gym. I, I cut down about a hundred pounds over the years since when I first started doing the site to now. Um, and yeah, I did go into the gym, but I never took supplements. You know, I did a right. lot of cardio. I did a little bit of weight training. Maybe I should have taken some supplements, but, um, it, it was something I never really thought about. Um, at the same time, you're telling me you're making a Slimer tasting powder. I'm game. <laughs> I'll try it. I don't know. I mean, you can damn well bet that there's going to be a, a video review, a gr- you know, something up on the Ghostbusters sure. news YouTube channel. Um, but it, it's it's certainly it's certainly an oddity. It's a weird one. Um, but I do know that when it comes to this this tie in. They've got more stuff coming in the, in the respects that there's probably going to be like maybe like some some promotional, like a teaser or some. There was something they shot from what I've heard um, for the launch of this thing that I, I think people are going to get pretty, pretty jazzed about. That's cool. I mean, I, yeah. again, I'm, I, I think it's weird largely because of the reason you said so. Like, I don't I didn't see it as a the target market. Um, yeah, like, that makes sense. And th- like, and I, this is not know. like a, a disrespect thing or anything. this is just no. people. The, the 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 Ghostbuster fans out there are. <laughs> are, are a lot of late 30 early 40 year, year old individuals 50 year old yeah. individuals and such right like they grew up in the 1980s and what happens when you get a little bit older you know you get a little bit chunkier I'll, I'll say it a little more bluntly uh my going running line on this and this is not to be rude or mean because i fit into this entire demographic is uh a lot of the folks i know in the ghostbusters fan and the last time they were inside of a gym was gym class um, mm-hmm. <laughs> that was like the last time they were there. And that was like 20 years ago. And Wait. in my case, it's like, I go work out at the pool every week. I go swim, but like, I don't do weight training. And, you know, so yeah, I don't know. But. Here's the funny thing about this though. So Ghostbusters, you know, the, they get announced, uh, as this whole supplements, you know, the energy drinks, all that stuff. Um, so that is coming out. And then just like days later, G fuel, they randomly tease and they kind of actually not even tease. It's available right now. They show off a glow in the dark uh, dripping slime shaker cup. Again, not licensed, not endorsed by Ghostbusters. It's their own thing. Very similar to Starbucks's right. dripping slime tumbler. Yeah. Except um, half the cost. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, again, I'm buying these things here in Canada. So like my tumbler, God, what was it, like 40 bucks? I think 45 bucks. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, nuts. this one glows in the dark from G Fuel and everything. And the funny thing was, is I was on the G fuel website and I started looking and they have nightmare on Elm street, Friday, the 13th, mm-hmm. like these licensed horror based products. Yep. And like, I gotta admit, I'm not again, a supplement user, but starting my day off with like, like a bloody Jason Voorhees energy drink or something along those lines. Right. I could get down on, you know, maybe, sure. maybe supplementing a, a you know, a, a breakfast for one of these beverages. I don't know. I, I'm I'm all for it. And again, I think the franchise has been uh, you like there has been a lot more ridiculous items and out there items that has had the Ghostbusters brand attached to it. And Mm -hmm. again, like me right now, I. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. I'm going to I'm going to see if it's any good. Uh, I mean, again, I've said it time and time again, uh, if it has the Ghostbusters logo on it. There's probably a 70 percent chance I'm going to like it. But um, yeah, I'm I'm definitely going to try it. I have to admit that i came out of that conversation thinking it's still weird but then i went and googled and was like okay well where would i buy this and then i realized that there was like 
a Ninja Turtles ooze yeah. product that's like a pre-workout. And I was like, oh, and so much the same way you're talking about, like, there's a, you know, a, a Friday the 13th version or there's a, fr- an, a you know, whatever, like there's yeah. zombie fuel, whatever. Um, I just kind of I think what made my brain break about it is that. I would expect that kind of marketing on like a hostess pudding pie in mm-hmm. the 90s. <laughs> right? Like that, that's well, what I expect to be marketed using these brands. Here's it's the weird the attachment, shit though. food I would have eaten that made me need to work out. <laughs> like, exactly. But here's the weird attachment. There are companies out there like Ghost that make these supplements. Right. And some of their biggest sellers is Ghost Chips Ahoy. And like yeah. all these other like <laughs> cereal brands, cookie brands that they have got the rights to that they're releasing as protein powders and right. such. So it appeals very much to that, you know, that 80, you know, the kid that grew up in the 80s and the 90s and such like that. There's definitely an attachment there. Again, though. I doing something like Chips Ahoy, everybody eats Chips Ahoy, you know, like everybody's right. had a Chips Ahoy cookie. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily everybody is a diehard Ghostbuster fan and they're willing right. to buy Slimer supplements. So yeah. I do get that weird disconnect where it may not be for everybody um, and it can it, it may feel a little forced for some people. Um, and again, you're talking to me who, you know, I own the My Little Pony Ghostbusters action figure. I own the, <laughs> uh, what is it? The Monster High Ghostbusters tie-in figure. You know, I own a lot of weird stuff. The Mr. Potato Head Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. Of course, I'm going to try it. Of course, I'm going to, you know, give it a, give make a video out of it. And that's the thing, too. I make content about Ghostbusters. So, of course, yeah, it's, it's, it's a given. But yeah. there is a lot of other connections out there when it comes to, like like we were just saying horror based franchises teenage mutant ninja turtles they've already had it um i'm a little surprised that ghostbusters though um and and no slight against the company that is making them but i'm kind of surprised that the ghost brand didn't acquire the ghostbusters rights. right that, that seems like a like a perfect tie-in you already got their yeah. logo and everything add the busters you know name afterwards yeah but, i agree uh, i kind of felt like there must have been some sort of like weird mad men style pitch meeting where it was just like both companies had to pitch back to back in a hotel room where Eric Reich was sitting down evaluating <laughs> who had the better yeah. work, pre-workout product pitch. I but don't know. But. Again, EHP Labs, uh, and I, I, I can talk about this. They've kind of hinted at it. Actually, I know they've, they've commented. One of the guys uh, that works there, he commented on my Instagram post about uh, another company's Shaker Cup. They are doing Shaker Cups. So... Somebody who, let's say they may want a new Slimer cup, they may want to maybe a Stay Puffed. I've only seen the Slimer so far. Yeah. Um, but, you know, they want a product that has Slimer on it or Ghostbuster imagery on it. And they don't necessarily want these, what are they called? Oxy greens and blessed protein powders and everything. Uh, right. There is going to be stuff for you. It's going to have, you know, the EHP Labs logo on it and such like that. But there is definitely going to be things I think people are going to buy without buying the protein powders and the energy drinks and all that such. So I'll still have a cup I can buy to shake up green Russians if yeah, I want totally. to. Okay. Totally. Cool. <laughs> Not that I've ever done that. I don't really like milk based green drinks, Russians. But, um, now I'm like, wouldn't be Ooh, a white. Slima, Russian. You're so nice. You need some green milk. <laughs> um, be weird. So, well, that's, that's sort of last week's news. So what we should do right now is we should get into this thing that every week we'd talk about that kind of is really your entire wheelhouse. Because we're going to talk about Ghostbusters headlines. Still making headlines all across the country. The Ghostbusters are at it again. Today, the entire eastern seaboard is alive with talk of incidents of paranormal activity. All in topic today, ghosts and ghostbusting. Extra plasm. Read all about it. Ghostbusters headlines coming at you. All right. So getting into headlines, which most of which, you know, you you already know about because you're Ghostbusters news. That's your job. Um, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we need to talk about, well, first, typically we talk about official release information, like stuff that's official about the upcoming movie. And unless you're sitting on some secret pile of things, I still don't think we have any news to report about the upcoming movie for like the third week in a row, because we still don't know what it's called. Uh, there's been no movement towards uh, a trailer so far. I really, I have to be honest. I thought we were going to see a trailer by the middle of the month. I really did. I was like, yeah. they're going to do it. They're going to link up Halloween and Ghostbusters marketing for like the first time ever. It's going to be a successful synergistic. Like, let's take the spooky mm-hmm. season. That game is coming like there. There's the DLC that's coming. There's a, a VR game. I figured by now we'd see a trailer, but we haven't even seen a teaser. It's so weird that there's so much happening. That's not the movie. Yeah. You know, like that. That's like the weirdest thing. And, and not even 
uh, like as you just said, the games, I mean, there's so much other stuff and I know we're going to probably touch on some things like Grand Theft Auto and their Ecto one. And then, you know, you have stuff that took took place this past weekend at New York Comic Con. Uh, There is so much happening outside of even like the official license just because it's the Halloween season. It feels really weird that there's not a trailer. You know, there's nothing. I mean, there's still two no. weeks left, but yeah, it, it, it just, despite what everything, what, whatever else happens, it kind of falls flat because we're approaching Halloween and there's no trailer. Like, the best, there's a slip cover for a DVD at Walmart. <laughs> Yeah. Like the, the most official thing I feel like I'm getting related to a Ghostbusters movie at Halloween is, oh, you can buy the exact same. And let's be real. A JD shout out to JD Raymer, friend of the podcast, who went and found that DVD mm-hmm. slip cover. And turns out it is literally the same edition oh, yeah. of the movie, just with a different slip cover on. And he was like, I, it's, they're lucky I didn't just steal the slip cover. <laughs> like I'm in, <laughs> dude, I'm in Canada, though, so I don't I don't even get those slip covers. So like it's just to me, I'm like, what? There's an opportunity to market Halloween and Ghostbusters so much harder together. And you have a new movie coming out. Like, I'm just shocked at this point that we're at the 16th of the month. Right. And it it feels nothing. like that. Honestly, every Halloween, it should fall like Ghostbusters should fall into that monster cereal category where every year there's Stay Puft marshmallows. Every yeah. year there's Ecto Cooler. Every year you could find Slimer Jello pudding cups, you know, just random stuff like that that just exist and you know they're coming and people wait right. for them and they buy it up and then they post on social media making other people want to you know want to go out and buy it we should be at that stage especially considering the 40th anniversary is next year like this is you know slap a sticker on there that just says next year 40th anniversary get people hyped get people excited you know new movie coming it just it's it feels like a, a weird waste opportunity and of course yeah i'm sure there'd be a lot of stuff that that got put on hold because of the you know, the delay and the writer strike and actor strike and all that such. I'm sure they probably had some stuff lined up, quite a few things lined up for this Halloween season, but just not to have really anything out um, aside from video games, which I'm really excited for these games and the DLC for you know, Spirits Unleashed. It, it, it just seems like a really missed opportunity. Yeah, I kind of agree that things feel like. I don't know, I I think that the screen actors guild this strike is still happening like this is something to consider that like we have heard the writers are done uh being on strike but sag is still on strike so any promotional stuff that would need to happen for this movie obviously can't involve the actors right now um but but that being said like i expected at least a teaser trailer because it doesn't require that and Mm -hmm. like you don't like we didn't need any actors to see the bumper of the ecto-1 inside of a barn so no, no. I'm like wondering why we haven't seen anything. And then I talk to folks and I keep hearing folks. Well, oh, it's just too early. It's just too early to be marketing this movie. And I'm like, what are you talking about? The movie's allegedly five months away. Yeah. Right? Like we should no, be seeing something by early. now. Yeah. Like I would have. <laughs> I, I mean, think about how much lead time there was <laughs> for Afterlife. The first t- teaser came out in 2019 for God's and, sake. And that was just the tease. Like that was just like, hey, guess what? We're making it. Right. And I get it. Like they had to build some hype for that because Ghostbusters had been kind of idle, right? Like mm-hmm. it had been a cold franchise, but in like, I don't know. I'm not, this is not to be critical. I'm not like upset as much as I really thought by now you and I would be having a conversation about what the title of this movie is, you know, yeah. and maybe like that'll yeah. happen. Maybe we'll make, put this episode out and I'll look stupid this week. And I keep saying that because I anticipate <laughs> looking stupid. I mean, we we are in like right now. If there was something to come out, there was something to be like, hey, this is it, or even just a title announcement. I mean, you do have the VR game coming out. You've got the Spirits Unleashed DLC hitting. You know, you've got Halloween in general. Ghostbusters. There's a, a very heightened sense of it. You know, trending on social media over the next couple of weeks. Right. Uh, even today, I saw it was trending on on Twitter randomly or X. Um. So like, it it feels like if there's a time, do it now. But. You know, yeah, people, this people, is the time of year when people are posting things like random houses on YouTube that have like light shows set mm. to Ghostbusters. Like this is that that doesn't happen in June. <laughs> no, <That's>, you know, <laughs> so I don't know. I'm it's not to be overly critical. Hey, I'm not trying to be like Ghost Core. Hey, you're doing your job hey. wrong. That's ha- that's how you show it. You have a house doing the whole <laughs> Halloween display and you just play the trailer like. <laughs> On the side of the home, you know, <laughs> just like on the garage door. Yeah, that's how they that's how they reveal it. It's like some trailer. It's like some video that gets like 10 billion views. Those <laughs> videos always get ton. That's how you do it. 
There you go. The entire trailer is projection map to fit on someone's garage. That's Absolutely. <laughs> That's the reveal. I like this idea. Why not? At this point, I'm just be I really I would just be happy to have a movie. And I'm not this is not to be like spreading pessimism, spreading rumor. I have don't know anything. I, I repeatedly mm. say this, but like, look, if they don't do something to resolve this strike at some point, I don't know how the movie timeline doesn't move. Like, yeah. And that's part, the part where I go, are we not marketing? Because the studio knows that there's still some dynamic <laughs> nature to release date, given that the industry is still in dynamic flux as to who can even come to work. <laughs> like, so <laughs> well, I mean, the weekend they grabbed is great for, for March and everything. But, uh, you know, there, there's always a chance. Who knows? Maybe another delay. Maybe that, that, that 40th anniversary, maybe something around that time. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows what I, could be in the cards? And that's kind of where I'm at is like, I, you know, not to be like, hey, everybody, um, sorry to keep building anticipation for a trailer. I don't know anything about, but like, I don't I don't know when this thing is going to happen. Mm. I'm just in the same boat as everybody else in terms of sitting back and going, well, what are they going to do and when are they going to do it? And that's the part of my brain that at least like has taught introductory courses in media studies and gone to school for it. That goes, well, how are you putting together any sort of new voiceover or ADR to finish this thing out while your actors are still not able to work. I don't, I don't know, you know? Yeah. So. I've had a lot of people, they, they, they think I've got like some type of like insider information. Let me tell you, if, if I ever post a, like a GIF GIF of the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man on Twitter, uh, in late night, it usually means I've got something coming the next day. It's like, I got something. Those are usually like <laughs> things that I have that aren't important. I got no idea. You got no idea. No. Um, hopefully Sony has some idea. I'm sure they do. But um, I mean, yeah. it's Ghostbusters. So I imagine that the way it works is that they know about two weeks before they want to do something that they're going to do it. <laughs> Zing. Um, <laughs> but <it's> like, <laughs> I mean, that's kind of the deal, though, with a lot of television and film industries. Things are under wraps and yeah. secret until they're not, you know, so. Exactly. And you, and you always got to have like that. What if scenario? Like what if something leaks? You know, they've got to have uh, you know, be able to pivot if need be. Um, right. Yeah, there's a lot of moving parts, and especially with Ghostbusters, too, because uh, as I mentioned, I think two podcasts ago on here, um, there is so many other things when it comes to this machine that, that that isn't just the film coming out. You know, it's all the times, it's all the marketing. You know, I want to have Zaxby's chicken sandwiches <laughs> at the restaurant at the same time the movie's in theaters. You know, I don't want to have some oddity where something launches and the movie's not ready. So there's a lot of moving parts to this. So yeah, I, get it. I, I get it. I hear that. Um, I, and I, I, again, I, that's not me being super critical. Like they're doing it wrong as much as it is an industry where you're not going to tip your hand about what you're doing in long play, right? Like you mm -hmm. tend not to except for a trailer. Like that's the thing you tell people about months in advance, but like when your trailer is coming out, it's not something everybody knows. So I don't know. I just, I hope that we're going to find out soon if nothing else, because I just I, I want to talk about it. I want to talk about what the name of the movie is <laughs> like, and I don't want to be guessing about it. And I I feel like I don't know, I guess I feel like at this point that it's it's been so long ago that we were joking about the movie being called Hell's Kitchen that I'm surprised I don't know what the actual movie is called, you know, so uh, I've gotten to the point now that like it. I'm at nauseum when I'm when I have to write about it because it's like the untitled Ghostbusters sequel or, you know, the <laughs> upcoming Ghostbusters sequel, also known as Firehouse, codenamed right. Firehouse. I posted a thing um, on, on Instagram wishing uh, Gil Kinnan a, a happy birthday. And I just I'm like, I don't care. Just director of Firehouse. Like, I'm just <laughs> I'm, pa I'm past the point. Like, this is what you guys want to call it. Ghostbusters Firehouse. Sure. Here you go. I still think halfway that like it may just be the name of the movie, that that is the big troll move. Is that like at, <laughs> at this point? A lot of people know it as Firehouse. I almost feel like if they have another name, why not? Right. And I mean, the fact that they built it on a soundstage, I would assume that means it's going to have it's going to be pre pretty pivotal. There's probably going to be some big happenings at that firehouse. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be maybe a cent you know, century point of, of the actual story and everything. Uh, who knows? Maybe it actually will be Ghostbusters Firehouse. Yeah, I mean, I don't think you I don't think you build that set if you're not going to spend a lot of time in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there, there, there's a reason that, the, the you know, there's a reason that that set was built exterior, interior to that level of detail and everything connected. Um, yeah, yeah. So who knows? Yeah. Maybe, maybe maybe Ghostbusters Firehouse. So maybe, maybe next week, maybe next week we'll be back with a <laughs> I I don't th I think next week will be video game week. 
Um, because oh, yeah, there'll yeah. be lots to talk about with that, uh, in terms of the anniversary of spirits unleashed and stuff. And we'll get into that in a second, but, um, before we get into that, I do want to say at a production level thing to kind of know about, I always feel weird about talking about this as merch because it's not. Uh, you've reported on this. The entertainment memorabilia live auction is happening in London and the catalog is up now for the auction taking place in November. And there's a few Ghostbusters items in it. And I never feel comfortable talking about these as quote unquote merch items because they're not. They're props like they're. Yeah, yeah. They're not things I'm going to go buy at Ollie's on clearance. Um, so there's a few items up there that are really cool. And you pointed out one of them, which was that statue of Liberty, like miniature from ghostbusters two yeah, is yeah. in there, which is wild, but the, <laughs> people should go look at this at Go- ghostbusters news. Go take a look at Jason's coverage of this. But I wanted to ask you about inside the statue of Liberty miniature. There's this really weird looking like, <laughs> the, mm-hmm. like wooden troll version of <laughs> Egon Spengler. That's very strange. You know what? Now that you mentioned that, he does look like a lot like if you were to like to paint one of those like wooden miniature or like the, what, like what was it? <laughs> Ernest scared stupid when the yes. kids get turned into like wood characters and like the, the troll puts them the in the tree. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it 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 looks like a little miniature broken version of Harold Ramis just just in there. Um, it does. It looks like somebody took him and they're gonna store him in a tree. Yeah, <laughs> like they're just gonna go put him in a tree somewhere. Like. And and the funny thing about this piece too is like I was looking at it initially and I was like oh that'd be like a cool like thing to have on your desk and then I started reading the description and realized it was six and a half feet high like over six yeah. and a half feet high like the entire Statue of Liberty from like it pretty much goes from like the upper chest area to like you know the top of the hand with the, the hand being raised um, so this thing is is huge it is massive yeah and its starting bid is at like ten thousand pounds right and they're expecting uh, uh, yeah. between twenty and forty which. If you looked at the last auction, though, some of that Ghostbuster stuff went for way beyond their estimate. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. The, like, I, I cannot imagine this going low, like lower. I, it, it's going to I think for this one alone, this is going to do crazy good. Um, this is such a piece of like movie history. Um, I know Ghostbusters 2 is not as beloved as Ghostbusters 1. It's OK. People can be wrong. But I feel like somebody <laughs> out there, they want this in their restaurant somebody out there they want this in their museum then you got like hardcore collectors like this is a showpiece if there ever was one. Oh like, yeah this is yeah i mean super intricately sculpted right like all the yeah. details of the original statues like bust and arm and head are like re- reproduced here and it's like it's pretty crazy and it's in pretty good condition all things considered given that it's like a 30 year old piece and it's made of foam <laughs> like yeah, i mean it, it looks pretty Eon good. Egon is in the worst shape. <laughs> yeah. I mean, dude, dude's missing the left arm. Yeah. Um, he may have lost his head at one point, it looks like. But uh, yeah, the actual statue por- portion, like uh, Lady Liberty there, she, she's looking good. She's looking good for an old gal. Yeah. She's a harbor chick. Mm. Um, but I, I thought it was pretty cool. And I think the other things that are in the auction that they've got up there, um, there's one of those Gozer doors. The, like, yeah, they... They seem to be kind of like a dime a dozen. <laughs> there's a lot yeah, of those at this doors point. They kind of do, don't they? Like there's yeah. been so many of them that they've, that's been cast. I mean, to be fair, like you can buy that from like, that's a sideshow collectibles piece that you can buy yeah. as a replica, um, cast off the original model or the original mold. So and they're really I, well done too. Like I've got one in my collection. I mean, you could, you could cave a person's head in with one of those. Like oh, they're, yeah. they're, they're, they're girthy. I won one of those. Not that trivia. I'd recommend you do that, but. No, but I won one of those in trivia and I was worried about carrying it back to my car. And then I was like, it's okay. I'll just beat the hell out of somebody with it if they try and steal it. Yeah, (laughs) it's it's heavy enough. And I guess there's a couple um, of the V3 light up proton packs. I guess those Mm -hmm. must be leftovers that didn't get sold at the last prop store auction. I'm kidding. Those were those were all sold at the last auction. They were they were all sold. I mean, they did well. Like, honestly, I think with this, the Holtzman pack in in particular, that thing's going to go well like that. Yeah, there, there is the, that that's the one character out of the four that really has that kind of, you know, fandom behind her. Uh, I feel like that's going to do well. Uh, the other one, like it's missing buttons. Like clearly the first thing I noticed was like the buttons that's like broken off and you can see like the wood underneath. And um, this one may not go too crazy because um, I think they're looking for like eight to 16,000 pounds. Yeah. Um, which is like 10 to 20,000 US for each pack. But yeah, I think the Holtzman will probably. I think it may exceed that. I think it, I, I think there's a chance it may exceed. You know, I'm like not ambitious enough to go back and look at the other prop store auction from the last from the one in L.A. 
mm-hmm. but I kind of feel like they appraised the the packs at the last auction for less. Yeah. That like they, they didn't they anticipate totally, yeah. to get what they got for them and they appraised them for less last time. And that these well, like some of the stuff was like five grand. Higher. Yeah. That's like what I mean. It's like the starting on the last ones were were uh, a lot of I it was lower. like pretty much you to actually buy something that accurate or like sorry to build something that accurate it would cost you the same if not more right you know yeah, like it was to, to be that fair point. there was a lot more variety in that auction there were pke meters and traps mm-hmm. and all kinds of stuff but um it is weird it's i think that these are valued a little higher so who knows yeah. i think the most exciting thing in that set of stuff i'll be honest other than mm-hmm. the uh lady liberty is there are a set of richard edlin hand drawn terror dog sketches and concepts yeah and i saw those and i was like oh my god i want those and i want the i want to like frame them because they're essentially like a designing the terror dog they're hand-drawn they notes are. of like each angle the sides how the face would look etc and you can kind of see like from this set of images how they got to the terror dog that they ended up with you know the, the funny thing too though is like there's two shots in particular of the terror dog both like a regular and like a negative and they almost look identical to the terror dog. Uh, like, well, like one of the characters from like the real Ghostbusters. So you can yeah. tell that there was like inspiration reused from these original kind of like drawings in the animated series. Yep. I agree. Um, the, the design that's in the, the print, cause it's two prints and then a series of hand-drawn images mm-hmm. and the two finished oh, sorry, prints, the prints are yes. very much like, uh, the know, bog hound. Yeah. Like exa- there was like yes. a St. Patrick's day episode. Yep. And so they're kind of more like a, it's not this, it's not kind of the same feel of a terror dog. It's mm-hmm. a bit more like a, a demon face, you know? And so it's these other sketches that you kind of see that progression from that figure to this m- more akin to what we ended up with. And so I think those to me are probably the coolest piece of history in the lot. Like the, the no doubt the Statue of Liberty is very cool because it was like used during filming, but as somebody who loves to kind of see how we ended up with the things we ended up with, like, I just think these drawings are very, very neat. They're, they have all their eraser lines on them. You know, that's just like, this is somebody working out how to make the thing that we ended up with. And to me, that's very cool. So that's Richard. I mean, it's stuff. It'll sell for a lot. Anyone out there has a terror dog prop. Like if they've got like, you know, one of the screen used heads, um, claws, whatever they're like, this is almost a a no brainer, a company piece. Like I I really hope whoever grabs this, is not just somebody like, hey, it's only selling for 2000 I'll pick it up. I really hope who grabs this is somebody that can, you know, they can put it next to another piece of that terror dog puzzle. Yeah, I 100% agree. Like, that would make a lot of sense for somebody. And a bunch of those did just sell off. You know, there were, like, mm-hmm. terror dog claws and feet. There was even that head. That had, yeah, they had um, the, last, the, the auction where it was like that, like the, what was it, like the left eye, I think, was removed. Mm-hmm. The one, for, mm-hmm, the, so. for the scene where the uh, terror dog eye shows up inside the the statue when spook central first kind of gets revealed as spook central. Um, so yeah, I, I, I don't have this kind of money to buy these kinds of things, but I want them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it would be, it would be nice. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, I also don't have this. St- I mean, maybe we could, we could like, maybe like get together. We could, uh, you know, you pitch in your, pitch in your money. I pitch in my money. We kind of do like, maybe like a timeshare. Yeah, that's what we should do now. We're going to create a company of Ghostbusters timeshare props. But yeah. most of it, we're just going to have to go and get from Jeff Shrek. <laughs> that's true. That's true. That's true. Shout out to the Shrek family Ghostbusters collection. It would be great. <laughs> what we should do, we should just, and uh, I, I'm totally kidding here. We should just start like an appraisal service that like really kind of leans into Ghostbusters. So everybody <laughs> sends us like their stuff, you know, and then we just disappear. <laughs> We just disappear. It's, no. it's a, it's a it, victimless tra- crime, except it, for the victims. It's, it, 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 aren't there entire threads about people like this on GB fans saying oh. they're blacklisted? No, no. I mean, I've never, I hardly ever posted there. So how can I be blacklisted? I'm fine. No, I, I don't, I don't recommend anybody do that, but um, no, no one should do that. No, no, no. But if they do, um, they can use the Ghostbusters news mailing address just write ghostly appraisals <laughs> on it too. And uh, ghostly appraisals would be love what well, they would love to, um, you know, appraise your, your goods and maybe send it back. <laughs> maybe send it back. Not guaranteed. <laughs> yeah. We'll send you a certificate of receipt. Yeah, Not one of send- authenticity, but, but we got it. 
any, <laughs> any yeah exactly anything that is deemed uh you know uh non-valuable by me personally um we'll just keep you know if i it's fine it's okay oh lord <laughs> it's a registered business now it's okay ghostly appraisals <laughs> that's no, no just <laughs> we're gonna get in trouble <laughs> that's fine i think we're gonna like it uh, well at least these things will be coming over the canadian border so it can be international crime <laughs> exactly exactly I, I i feel like i should probably state the fact that do not use my mailing address to send me things to appraise that that was just a joke no that's uh, a joke you send fan mail feel free <laughs> But, uh, yeah, don't, don't send me things to appraise because you, you unless you don't want them back. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I'll praise them. I'm, I'm just getting deeper into it. Let's just move on to the next subject. The next thing we need to talk about, um, is the thing we're going to probably spend some time talking about, even though I feel like there's not that much to talk about. <laughs> and it's the thing I alluded to at the top of the podcast as being something big. Uh, for those of you out there listening, you probably remember. I was talking about the idea that there was going to be, uh, you know, probably some Hasbro things happening on 1027. I've been saying that for weeks. And then all of a sudden this past week, Hasbro turned around on the 12th of October and said, hey, we have something big to tell you about. <laughs> like on the 13th, stay tuned. And everyone in the Ghostbusters fandom shit themselves. <laughs> Every, everyone went, oh my God, what are they going to show us? And within less than 24 hours, I feel like everyone was like, it's a trap. It's a PKE meter. It's mm -hmm. Fright Features figures. It's a firehouse. It's whatever. And then we all waited around all day. And we got to three o'clock in the afternoon, PST, 6 p.m. EST. And Hasbro put out a four minute video that told us that we should wait for an announcement <laughs> on 1027 at their 1027 event uh so it was an announcement for an announcement that's like the best way yeah. to encapsulate it for me is that they put together an announcement that they would be making an announcement and then we have to wait for another announcement um i i have some feelings on this you know i have some feelings on this you and i have very different yeah. feelings on this i think yeah 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 <laughs> but i want to sort of start off saying i don't like feeling like we construct anxiety and wait for things without transparency. I know for some people, they're like, that's called building excitement, Jim. It's called mm -hmm. building hype. But here's my dilemma. I am the fan of a franchise that has been trying to put things out on schedule <laughs> for years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that even when it tries to act on schedule, ends up being like oh wait we were not ready <laughs> like and that's something that i grant a lot of patience to a, a, a covid happened right like a strike has happened there have been mitigating circumstances that would impact whether or not you could tell people about particular things and i get that but that's not true of the multi-million dollar toy company <laughs> like whatever mm -hmm. it is that they're about to show us if they're going to show it to us on 1027, unless we're getting a trailer in the next nine days, like it, it's not going to be about this movie, right? It's just going to be something Ghostbusters oriented, in which case, why did you need to do this? Why, why make build that sense of there's something to be ready for? But oh, no, wait, there isn't because I got enough of that going on. Well, their first post where it's like, you know, we got some big news. We got something's coming. Um, I don't know if they really thought fans would like grab it like they did and run with it. Like, I, I'm sure they did to a degree, but like fans, like, I don't know them being on the inside of Hasbro. They know how, how starved fans are when it comes to action figures and content and collectibles. Like, I don't think that they really have a good handle on the fact that people would do this because it's been such a dry spell. When it sure. comes to Ghostbuster action figures from Hasbro in particular. I mean, the last thing we got, was it like the, the family that bust together two pack? Was like that the actual like uh, not counting the Haslab pack shipping, but I feel um, like it was that. And then there was like the Mego four pack and yep. that may have been it. And obviously the Mego Where four does pack. Where does Bug Eye Ghost and, and Fearless Flush fit into that? Did these that they, came, they come after or before that? Before, family? I want to I want to say. Okay. But 
the the Mego pack, for example, that wasn't going to hit everybody because that wasn't a plasma series thing. You know, that was like a no. tie in type, like crossover type thing with Mego. Um, so like there has been such a just a gap in between plasma series figures. There's been such a unknowing of what's happening to the Kinder Classics line, like people just believing, OK, it's dead, but maybe right. it's not. You know, there, there's so much of a question mark as to them not coming around and being like, OK, this is dead, but this this line's still continuing. And oh, yeah, the HasLab thing, the Proton Pack was a huge success. Let's do another one. You know, there's none of that from them saying, OK, this is what we want to do. This is what you know, Ghostbuster fans should be looking out for. It's just been like a dry spell. Mm -hmm. So people understandably got really excited. And I don't know if Hasbro really expected people to get as excited and as pumped as they really got. I thought it was like, oh, cool. You know, new Ghostbuster item. That's awesome. Not like, oh, my God, I'm going to call in, you know, for sick work tomorrow just so I can <laughs> stay home and be the first to know. It. Like there was people were going nuts over this announcement. And then, you know, they got a four minute uh, tease upon a tease. I so, I think, to be fair, part of the reason why I think people went as nuts as they went is because do you remember a few months ago, back in July, when we thought we were going to get some stuff from Entertainment yeah. Earth? Yeah, right? Yeah. And it was like, that, I, to be fair, partially my fault. <laughs> like, I'll totally take the fucking blame for some extent of being like, look, this is on a calendar. Let's talk about that to folks because it was on a calendar. And then they took it away and everybody went, oh, okay. So it was like, we already kind of had this sense, of, I think some of us, and it's like, oh, True. they were going to announce something to us in July, and now they really mean it. Like, before it was a mistake, and they weren't ready to tell us, but now here we are, it's three months later, and they're telling us to tune in tomorrow that well, they have something huge to tell us about. Also, it's like, we're in a different time span, or a different area right now, where, you know, you've got things like the, you know, the writer strike, actor strike, right. things like that that are now, you know, in the works, or they're coming to an end, or what have you. So everything seems like it's kind of getting aligned. So... Right. When you have this straight line of like, hey, here's a toy, but then you, you know, you, you, you detour left and you throw someone a curveball um, that can be kind of jarring, especially yeah. when you're like, hey, this movie's on track and oh, cool. New toys. No, uh, uh, maybe not. What's happening? So, yeah, I, I can understand people getting a little riled up, a little angry. And, I'm, and I don't want to say I'm angry. I just I feel manipulated. If that, that's mm -hmm. the way to like put it is like I feel worked and I don't like that. Like, I don't like feeling worked by the thing that I like. <laughs> like, I just, I, I admit it. Like, I just, I understand marketing exists and I get that, like, I don't get to know about everything until it comes out. That's fine. But in this case, it's like, I don't like the feeling of feeling, oh, we're going to put out a big announcement. Tune in tomorrow. Oh, actually, just kidding. We're well, not. You know, we're going to show you a four minute video that we made in house and which I have a whole other set of feelings about that you know i don't know like well let's let's be honest like, like, let's just I mean, not that we're not honest but <laughs> their post no, the guys the guys who said they'll appraise your stuff and maybe send it back to you are totally honest <laughs> no i'm not gonna send it back to you i'm gonna be honest um okay so <laughs> their post read something strange is coming to your neighborhood find out tomorrow yeah something it's find out tomorrow i or sorry, find out more tomorrow. So find out more tomorrow. Find out more. Not find out tomorrow. Find out more tomorrow. <laughs> right? <laughs> yep. Find out more tomorrow. Then we're going to tell you. Now, I got to take some of the blame for this because my post read Hasbro teases new Ghostbusters reveal for this weekend. So there were people like myself that kind of jumped the gun. They were like, oh, man, they're like, they're going to they're going to at least tease something. They're going to tease a reveal and they did do right. that but i expected something to the degree of like the the hazlap pack where it was clearly a hasbro proton pack right you know, under this sheet and hey we're gonna do a hazlap campaign like i expected something like that not hey we're gonna throw you 30 different ghostbusters references in the span of three to four minutes one of these is probably gonna mean something the rest aren't <laughs> have at it one of them will be a giant clue board like the clue game that says clue on it mm. as we then wave around stay puffed items at you <laughs> like I just yeah um i don't that and i don't think you should take the blame for that because i think that that's part of the problem is that like what was suggested was that like there was going to be something substantial like I, I thought at the very minimal, if it if it's like because again their statement was find out more tomorrow. I thought find out more would have been, hey, we're launching a Haslab. Yeah, 
10 right. 27 get ready i thought that would be i, I legit thought that was going to be it i we weren't going to get a reveal but Haslab is coming get your credit cards ready this yeah. is going to be big you know like i that's what i thought um now it seems like they've kind of put themselves in a weird predicament where they've now got to deliver on that big sure you know like yep and and they're really focusing on the word big you know like yeah like it, it, and it's a weird thing where it's like people were thinking pro or people were thinking like maybe an 84 proton pack maybe pe- you know people are thinking uh you know ghost trap pk meter all these different things but none of those are, i mean aside from the proton pack none of those are big and you're not gonna the, the fact you're hyping it up as big you're not gonna double dip with something you've already done no i you know i think this is just total speculation and not a thing i would have said last week at all um Hasbro has an affinity right now for making giant sized action figures. Mm-hmm. It's kind of what they've done with HasLab now several times yep. over. They put out a Sentinel figure. They currently have a campaign for a giant man figure. And so here you have all of this something big. It's big. The video ends with it's big and there's definitely something here. Like to me, just all of that smacks of they're going to do a big stay puffed. Like they, that's, that's going to be, if it's not, a, if it's not a HasLab, I'll be surprised for the simple fact that all of these other big action figures have been HasLabs, right? They've all been yeah. that, like they don't release that as a retail store item. Um, and so I'm kind of at this point wondering if what we're going to see is a reveal of a, a stay puff that is say 22 to 30 inches tall, because we know that they have the capacity to build that from the line, the factory line they're using to build all these other giant size mm. figures. So, and I, I, to me, honestly, that makes the most sense. Like they're going to have to go there. There's only two things that would make sense to me being big. Uh, at the end of that video, you hear, you know, PK meter noise. You hear like a little grunt from Slimer mm-hmm. and you're like, well, I'm not, I mean, you're not, but I am. I'm over here. Like they're going to do a freaking full scale Slimer with a big old booty <laughs> and it's going to be like a grand and I'm going to buy it. But that's not in the wheelhouse. That's like Hasbro doesn't do life size right character props right uh mm-hmm. and as you were saying especially with the word big when you think ghostbusters if you're like ghostbusters big character big item what do you think of you think of the stay puff marshmallow man or the twinkie. that's what it, that's a big twinkie <laughs> and they're not good then yeah yeah there there was no twinkie wrappers in that commercial but no. um stay puff makes the most sense an overly large stay puff marshmallow man my question who out there wants a mm. massive Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. Ah, see, <laughs> like, you just ju- you just jumped my next question, which was I was going to say the same thing, which is I, I've got a lot of Stay Puffs. I could not if you told me which one the biggest one is, I could probably tell you, um, or I probably couldn't tell you because I've got like if there's so many. Um, do you, you know, own the uh, Do you own the Diamond Select Stay Puffed? Yeah, then the, there the you the go. Bank? There's I, your I own the one. Diamond Select. Yeah, that's the big boy. Yep. And if you're going to tell me that you're going to make something, let's say to like the SH figure art stay puff that was like crazy articulated and looked amazing. And you're going to make him 25 inches tall, 30 inches tall. Am I going to, I mean, okay. Am I going to bite regardless? Yes. Okay. No matter what it is, <laughs> I'm biting. I'm in on this. Um, I went on the proton pack. I, 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 I grabbed a couple of those. Um, if it's stay puffed, I can't see people buying multiples of that or like right. stay puffed like they did the packs by any means. So I don't see if it is yeah. a has lab, for example, it's not going to be nearly the success of what the proton pack was. I agree. I, I think that that that's that there's only so much space people have. Mm-hmm. And for those of us who are going to put that much level of money into something like that, a giant size stay puffed. Well, most of us have probably already spent that money on some giant size stay puffs and we only have so much room. So and the, the, a lot of things when it comes to Ghostbuster characters, if you ever buy for people who have not purchased a large scale Slimer or a large scale stay puffed of any kind the space that you're allotting to it add more to it because you typically don't think about the gut you typically don't think about the overall circumference like the size of these figures you can be like okay this guy's this this height but i've had to rearrange my set my setup so many times because i didn't think about you know how big that slimer actually was or how big that slime or big that stay puffed actually is um they're they're huge they're not like a sentinel where they're you know muscular and you really just have to like stand it in one area these guys have a lot of girth. So if it's a stay puffed, if it's a slime or something yeah. like that, um, it's going to take up a lot of real estate in your collection. Mm-hmm. And I'm not like, 
trying to like talk anyone out of it before it no. gets revealed. Uh, because again, I'm going in, uh, all, whatever it is, I'm all in on this. I'm excited for it. If it's a figure release, if it's a Haslap, I don't know. Um, if it's even a figure, I don't know if it's, a, it could be a prop. Um, and I mean, me and personally, fair, we could be totally wrong. It could turn out to be the, like a recreation of the Kenner firehouse. Cause there was enough of that in be. the video too, but it could be. Like, and, but nobody waved the clue box around over that on strings. Mm. Oh, <laughs> like, oh, but and, and uh, again, if it's a pro, if it's a, you know, firehouse, I would love, I would double dip on that to have a pristine one. Totally. I've got my one from mm-hmm. my childhood, but I would, I would totally go in on that. Um, but something like that to me is strangely does have, I don't want to say more appeal than a stay puff, but again, I've got so many stay puff marshmallow men in my collection. Yeah. I don't know. You know, like I'll buy, I, I feel like at this point I'm buying them out of necessity or like out of just habit, not necessity, but out of, out of habit. I don't yeah. need these figures, um, but yeah, it's just out of habit. Like, oh, stay puffed. I'll buy them. I'll take I, them. Um, I don't want to preemptively be like a cynical. I guess I don't know if I'm being cynical or if I'm just being kind of pessimistic about this. And I don't mean to be, but and we could be totally wrong. Maybe it won't be a stay puff. But <clears throat> what you just said touches on something I have a feeling about with, with relationship. To this entire video, because you just said this thing, which is like that the firehouse might arguably be cooler, or have greater broad appeal, right. Than, than a stay puff figure. And I think that's true because like the Kenner classics figures, when they came out were interesting because people bought them to give them not, not cause they just wanted them for their own collection, but they bought them for their kids. They were like, I can now give my kid an experience like the one I had when I was a kid. Does that make sense? Totally. Okay. So this, if you have a, a 22 inch tall like stay puff figure, that is a has lab in the same way as a giant man or a sentinel that's explicitly not for kids, right? That is explicitly mm-hmm. for adult collectors and it doesn't really do much to actually help to propel the brand itself uh, yeah. into a new generation of fandom. And this is going to be like, this is a little bit of a rant. I apologize, but <laughs> I feel like the way that things are being marketed is not necessarily marketing the fandom or the brand IP that Hasbro has the license for in a broad enough way. My concern is that like, I know this is going to sound for some people are going to think I'm just being pessimistic, but I look at the video that came out and I have this sort of like guttural response that frustrates me because I'm reminded of what happened at my job a few years ago when the administrators at my job were showed iMovie. They had never used it. None of them ever had it. And then somebody made an iMovie presentation. And from that point forward, every single meeting I went to at work had to have an iMovie presentation made by a college administrator who didn't really know how to make a movie, (laughs) right? Like who didn't really know how to make an overwhelming, meaningful campaign. And to me, that four minute video is one that speaks to a particular audience. Toy fanatics. Yeah. People who were willing to sit down and watch a four minute video. And this is not to slag on. Yes, have some because they totally did this. And I was in the chat and contributing (laughs) like while they were doing it. But it's folks who want to sit down and look at a four minute video and pull it apart piece by piece by piece by piece to chase after quote unquote clues. And to me, that is a situation where I would rather you develop a slick PR campaign that tells me about how there's an amazing Ghostbusters toy coming out and put it into the eyeballs of a future generation of people who are going to interact with it. And it's not what I see happening. What I see, whether it's Indiana Jones, whether it's Ghostbusters, these brand IPs that Hasbro has, they market through a circle. They market back to an echo chamber of toy collectors on the internet, on YouTube, and they've stopped even doing the PR work of going to conventions or developing commercials and things because instead, They've fallen into COVID production logic of, well, we can just turn it over to a group of internal people to put together a a video that's fun and cute, but that has the production values of a guy in a fright wig for four minutes running around with stuff on strings. Hey, now. That was cinema. (laughs) Sorry for my rant. I told you I was going to be negative. I I warned everybody. Directed by Martin Scorsese. That was, uh, I don't know. I, again, I, I kind of alluded to it earlier in the video. Um, I mean, I'm all for content as someone who has done a Ghostbuster website now for close to 15 years. Uh, there was a dark time uh, yeah. when there wasn't anything. And I mean, even this year with with the strikes and such like that, 
Um, there was days, like, like even today, uh, there's not a lot of news out there. There's not a lot of, you know, headlines out there as of today. Um, so I kind of, I'm, I'm probably, I know I'm in the minority, but I kind of like this slow drip content where it's just, we're going to, you know, we're going to kind of lead you on a little bit. We're going to, you know, come on, come on. Um, because I hope it does gain more traction. I hope it, more people see this stuff and it garners more of an audience for that big reveal. And, you know, it can be a, hopefully a bigger success, but at the same time, I'm also worried that it may turn off people because they're expecting something that Hasbro can't deliver or mm-hmm. that they're not going to deliver. Um, I mean, if it turns out to be a stay puff marshmallow, man. Okay, cool. But now my mind's racing as to, okay, but if it is stay puff, what could they do different? Could they right. include multiple heads? Could they clu- include some type of like, you know, charge system where you can like interchange the arms and the legs? Could there maybe like an internal light where you can make it look like he's exploding? Like maybe there's going to be attachments for, oh, you know what? Maybe there's going to be attachments for the Ghostbuster toys where you could like position them in it and it looks like they're like covered in marshmallow. You know, maybe <laughs> if it, like things like that. Like I'm thinking my mind's racing as, as to if it's stay puffed, all these things. Right. But and what it- if it's not? You know, like, it's, and, right. what if it's not, what if it's just a set of fright features figures and a firehouse, which again, I, I'd be fine with if it's a stay puffed, I'm not going to be like those bastards. Not, they're the worst. That's you not know, but, big though. I mean, the firehouse is big firehouse. Is what big. if they were just like, okay, here's a firehouse at double the size. We're making our Kenner firehouse. <laughs> we're putting the containment unit in it. You know, we're, we're going all out. We're making the firehouse. You guys should have got back in 1987. We partnered up with play school. We're putting together a firehouse for the backyard. It's like oh. that uh, a playhouse, but <laughs> it's a did firehouse. You see, did you see they're making? Uh, they're gonna be, they're gonna do a um, a Kickstarter for like, like those big tyke bikes for adults. No, yeah, funny. they were at Toy Fair and it's launches next year, and they're doing like those big like you know freaking child bikes for adults. I'm not buying one. I just want no. I'm not either. But you know, big I'm just saying. You know, it's funny. It's that's it's, it's funny. crazy. It's it's that's out there, but. Um, yeah, I don't know. Me personally, if, if you could ask me, Hey, Jason, what would you like to see? What would you like to see revealed? I don't think it's going to be this because again, the emphasis on the word big, I would love to see a pack of gear to go along with the proton pack. Considering the proton mm-hmm. pack was such a success trap PK meter, right? You know, maybe something else thrown in there. I don't know. But, uh, if you want to do a military belt, whatever, just something, but I feel like you don't have to do the military belt. You can just focus in on the gear because everybody else can buy that stuff easily. Um, but yeah, I would love to see some of that stuff. Maybe like a real Ghostbuster starter pack or a Ghostbuster starter pack as in, hey, you know, you got the pack. Now get the rest of the gear. But um, again, with the emphasis on the word big, I, I don't see it being a trap. I don't see it being a PK, anything like that. Yeah, I would have said a trap. Um I would have said potentially a trap two weeks ago. I would have been like, yeah, no, next has lab. But I, I think it'll be potentially a trap that would make sense we gotta get we got a neutrona one why not and but i don't know now i really don't the trap works so well too in the respects that okay the, the you know your first you, you unlock the trap that's your first tier and then right. as you start climbing up there then you have like the replaceable like side kind of tube things where you can have like the gb1 style then the gb2 mm-hmm. you know the different colors and then you know uh, as you get higher you can have the rtv attachment right that can go underneath it you can have all these little different ex- extras on that trap because the rtv because of the wear and tear you could swap out the doors have you know clean doors have dirty doors have you know scraped up doors there could be all these extra little perks so it would work perfectly for a has lab um but again i i just don't see it happening hopefully i'm wrong uh because that's my one big thing i would love to have uh, and i'm sure a lot of collectors would love to have a trap that isn't a costume prop that is easily attainable yeah that they can just buy i agree like and it's that would be good i i I don't disagree with you about that at all and Mm -hmm. i think the same thing goes where a whole bunch of people who like to have props and things around their offices and around their homes who are not necessarily like, I mean, the same way the proton pack happened, like they they sold 22,000 of them, right? Let's be fair. A whole mm. bunch of them went to resale because we know that there's a whole bunch of them on yeah. YouTube, on eBay. There's a whole bunch of people bought two, whatever. Uh, but leaving that aside, part of the reason that campaign did so well was because a whole bunch of people who never would have spent the money on a high end proton pack were like, this is in my attainable price range. Even Mm -hmm. if they're not the folks who go out and cosplay, right? They're not the folks who necessarily are doing franchises. They're the people who were like, ah, it would be cool to have this because it was awesome to put in my collection in my nerd cave. But 
I could never spend that much. So bringing it in at that price point meant that you sold proton packs, people who never otherwise were going to buy one. Yeah. Right. And the same thing I think could go for the trap, right? Or the PKE meter. Yeah. But I, that's where I go. Would that same person, are they going to buy a 22 inch tall action figure? I don't know. Like that. And, also, and, and, and we could be totally wrong. It may not be that at all. I, I may be well, like, we well, may have raised the thing that makes no, that had makes is completely not at all the issue. Well, we, we also don't know the sales figures. We don't know exactly how well, like we, we saw plasma series figures wind up in discount stores. <laughs> we saw Kenner action figures get discounted on Walmart store shelves, but we don't actually know the sales figures. We don't know <laughs> how much, you know, of that. Right. Yeah. And so like, I, I have to say this because I have to say that Craig, Craig Goldberg made this joke when they did their um, watch along on YHS of this video. But I, I want to say I said this before I before he said it, because the minute I saw it in the video, I was like, this is what they are standing in. The, the guy is standing in the middle of that video in a toy section, a toy store inside the Hasbro headquarters. And he is standing next to literally like six foot tall stacks of plasma series figures of the glow mm -hmm. in the dark figures. And he picks one up and he looks at it. And on the front of it, there's an orange price tag. And I just shouted out like at my computer, there's an Ollie's at Hasbro. <laughs> like, because everything yeah. that's in this toy store that Hasbro has internally is back stock or dead stock. And so it was just like, oh, these are all the figures that are being discounted and going to Ollie's. I see. Like, yeah. I don't know why this yeah. is a good look for marketing a new product. Like, <laughs> I. I don't know again when it comes to the uh, the whole the tease upon the tease I I didn't mind it I, I I do wish though that there was at least a clear reveal though there was a clear yeah. idea there was a at least something to kind of like you know to bite your teeth into of sure. like okay it could be these other things but it's really it's they're really pointing at this maybe not as out there as the proton pack was from Hasbro but I just feel like again they they threw. 30 things at you in a course of a small thing with really the only underlining stuff being um, Kenner toys and pink slime. That was the yeah. two things. And let me tell, let me tell you, if you want to talk about big, if they're, if they're doing uh, a slime blower, I don't see the, <laughs> the cells anywhere near the pack. No, but I I'm buying three. Yeah. I'll buy one. Nobody but, makes but slime I don't think blowers. it'll go anywhere near what the pack was if they ever did that. Right. But no, I again, I think you're hitting the nail on the head of saying like that it should have been a clearer reveal. I'm not like, oh, they should have made one video and that was it. You should never tease anything. No, I, I understand teasing, but show me what you're actually like want me to get excited about. And I'm going to find out more about as opposed to sort of manipulating me as a fan into going, you have something to be very excited about tomorrow. And then just going, actually, you don't. You got another like two weeks to wait until you can be excited. And then we're not even going to tell you what it's about, but make sure you come on back and put a lot of time into that 1027 event, which to be 100% real, I will be tuning in for the Ghostbusters well, segment of and then well, tuning let, right back well, out. Let's just let's just go back here. Their, their post read, we have a terrible feeling that something awesome is going to happen soon. They <laughs> have a terrible. <laughs> First of all, I have a terrible <laughs> feeling that something awesome. How? Why? Like that, that feels like that? such a weird. That feels like a weird shoehorn in there, you know, like, I feel ah, we have a terrible feeling. It's like I saw an old advertisement uh, today for the old like it was an old Super Nintendo wrestling game for the Royal Rumble, W4 Rumble. And it was like the ad said, no holds barred savings. And it was like, no holds barred. Like, that's the barring of like wrestling maneuvers. What? This doesn't, this doesn't make, how any does this make any sense. Uh, yeah. But yeah, we have a terrible feeling that something awesome is going to hap happen soon. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, some people, were, they were left with terrible feelings after that. So some people think it's pretty awesome. So, I mean, I guess it's kind of accurate, but I, I'm, I'm excited. And uh, yeah, me personally, I cannot wait till uh, 1027, the big uh, HasLab event. I would like to, I obviously want to know what's going to happen to 1027. My final thing, maybe I'll say about this so we can move on from it so I don't just ruin the podcast by being like, Jim decided to be sad this week. Um, I'm not really sad. Like, I'm excited that there's Ghostbusters stuff coming. And I, if anything, I'm just more a little kind of, I feel worked. I feel a little manipulated. And I think the part of the reason I do is I kind of hit on this earlier about COVID production values that a lot of companies 
just turned marketing over to teams who were doing other stuff, making, mm. producing, et cetera, during COVID because they couldn't get together. So things happened on Zoom. And that's where you saw like this Hasbro shift away from and Met- Mattel did it too. They're like, we don't need to go to cons anymore. That's what COVID taught us is we can just go and make video packages and have a 1027 events or a Hasbro Pulse Con. And we don't need to go anywhere to market to our fan bases. But that's what my concern is. Like they're just talking to the people who are already buying their product when they do that. They're tapping yeah. into an existing market rather than talking to anybody new about things. And it bothers me to watch companies take a multi-million or billion dollar film franchise and kind of treat the marketing of it as I don't I don't know, a cottage industry. I don't know how to, to phrase this, but like the, I'll give you another example. I have a real issue with the way that Ilphonic markets that game by having devs go on streams from their studio apartments. <laughs> like where I'm like, like I, I your game is cool, whatever, right? Like you have a, a, a license for a multi-million dollar game. Yet every time you want to talk about what you're doing with that and build some excitement for it, I'm watching a guy who had to clean off his bed before he could come to work. <laughs> you know, I, I get that because like even even if you're going to do it from your home and I totally get that. I mean, like looking at like and I don't want to single Illphonic out, but right no, now I don't. Why I'm, like, they, I'm using them as a second example with yeah. this Hasbro thing, right? This is a, even, a larger, even if you broader are going, scheme. But if you are going to use these COVID style <laughs> tactics, there's better ways to do it. I mean, if you're going to do it from your home, you could easily like. I don't know, like me, myself, I don't, my streams are nothing to, to write home about, but there's a couple of LED lights that get put up. You know, my living room doesn't look like a living room. It looks like a set at that point. Right. Um, and when you've got Ilphonic doing Ghostbusters and then, you know, they're going to be doing killer clowns. I mean, there is such a fun thing that you could do there when it comes to, you know, your backdrop and, you know, making it tied to those games. Um, I, I definitely, I, I definitely get that. I understand that. Yeah. I mean, and it's like, for me, it's like, I teach from home and I have a, $150 Elgato pop-up green screen and mm-hmm. a $75, you know, multiple LED light kit that I can use for that to be on yeah. Zoom and not look like I'm in the middle of a Ghostbusters collection. Well, if, <laughs> right? if you were to like, anyone who's looked at me on camera for the podcast to see what my office really looks like. It's a complete bombshell of Ghostbusters stuff. But if I were to go to work yeah. in that context, I would not be taken credibly. And I think that that's part of what I'm getting at here is like the tease is one thing. The fact that then what we're shown is a four minute video that's produced by folks who are like, you can see Hasbro employees walking in the background. And as much as like, again, this is not to be angry at yes, have some. I'm not. I was part I was in the chat offering up super chats to contribute to that conversation. But like one of the things people are excited about is they're hitting pause to be like, who's that in the background? Is it Emily? And it's like, I I don't really care if one of the marketers from the Hasbro team who shows up at conventions is in the background of this video. In fact, they shouldn't be in the background of this video if it's a well done promotional piece. (laughs) But instead, like the conversation we were having in that live stream was people saying it's hard to make one of these videos. I really admire production values. And it's like, but it shouldn't be hard. There should be somebody whose job it is who gets paid to literally create this slick production package. As as much as I want to joke about, you know, this is cinema and everything. uh, There is a weird identity crisis I do find in that video where. I, I feel like they don't lean if they're going to be like, you know, fake beard, mustache, all this stuff, you know, hair. Um, I feel like they should lean a little bit more so into the goofy, even though it's a pretty goofy ad. Yeah. I don't know. The way it's shot feels like it shouldn't be. I, if that makes any sense, like there, it seems like it has this weird identity crisis where it doesn't know what it wants to be. And at the same time, you're kind of like the payoff would be the ending. Like the payoff is like, bam, here's your product. Right. And then it's like, bam, no, it's not. You, It's big. Um, so. Without that payoff, I feel like, yeah, just it, there, there is a sense of it falling kind of on its face. But at the same time, I mean, you go on YouTube, you see people doing breakdowns, you see people reporting on it and right. such like that. Um, so it is getting more eyes on that 1027 event, which I'm down for. Uh, and again, given that they've already dipped their their toes into the proton pack, um, if it is a Hazlap, whatever it's going to be is not going to. I can't see them releasing anything that would exceed the, the, the pack. No, I. I wonder um, whether or not they actually are getting new eyes on the 1027 event or if they're just uh, getting the same eye. And that's kind uh, of my point is it's like, 
I when you go out in your market and say, hey, make sure you show up for our event that happens only on a live stream that only toy collectors would ever really know about because they're people who are on toy YouTube talking about every single move and every single frame of every single little four minute video we put out as viral stuff. Are you actually marketing and establishing branding for anybody outside of that insular little circle of people doing that activity? Or are you hey. stuck like talking to I a certain, you know, an echo chamber. And so I don't know, like that's, I guess we'll see is the answer to that question. I you know? still find it weird that Hasbro produced a commercial for the fright feature toys for the last movie with like Trevor and Phoebe and all of them. Mm -hmm. And you had to go out of your way to find that commercial. That was yes. such a well put together retro style commercial that I never seen like Google ads or anything like throw my no. way, YouTube throw my way. Nothing was ever spent to my knowledge to actually promote that video right and that again it's such a cool throwback commercial like that commercial was done so well um but nobody saw it no nobody saw and it whatsoever. instead we all talk about like what is happening because this person or this that person or these first names that we now know at hasbro if you're deep into toy tuber community and that's kind of what you know again it Ilphonic has a bit of the same issue right it's like you know who the dev streamers are I won't name people by names because I don't want to be mean to because uh, this is not about them. It's not about the individuals. It's about, to me, the marketing strategy of saying we just need to talk to the people who are going to buy our product anyway. And we don't need to put a lot of money into production because that would just be that would just mean spending money to reach people who might not buy our product. And it's like, right, that's what advertising is about. That's that's what you do marketing for. It's to capture new people to come look at a thing or to buy a thing that aren't already. So. I don't know. I've probably beaten this to death and I'm sorry if I dragged you through it with me uh, being negative, <laughs> but I like it. I don't know. I'm again, I like the slow drip. I'm going to be there. 10, 27. And I know anybody listening to this, you're going to be there too. Like you're going to be watching. I'm going to be there. Um, but sure. It's going to be great. And it's yeah. not that again, I, I think I'd be less upset about the slow drip because it's not that so much as it's the like lack of any information that I can utilize in a way this is just at a separate level, right? Like you, I think you might appreciate this a bit. I look at an announcement like that and I'm like, cool, we got content this week. <laughs> like, yeah, oh, totally. Great. There's something for us to talk about because they're going to announce something. So in the podcast this week, I know we're going to talk about potentially a Hasbro reveal. And so I sit around being like, well, we make sure I get the details in the Hasbro reveal only to find out there is no real reveal. It's like, OK, cool. So what do you want me to talk about this week? You want me to talk about that video? All right, let's do it. <laughs> this is my talk about that video. Right. And that's I, for some people, they're talking about that video might be very much like, let's go through all the clues and get excited about it. And I did a bit of that part, but it just this. I don't know. I just still kind of walk away from it with this hollow sense of just like that really could have done more to market things. And if anybody's listening out there who thinks I'm being really mean to Hasbro, and you're like, you're not going to get an influencer box of toys right anymore. That's OK. I wasn't anyway. <laughs> uh, but that said, though, I just want to say that I really love and respect everyone at Hasbro. And uh, <laughs> if you guys do an influencer box uh, anytime soon, I mean, uh, you know, uh, that last one was wonderful. So, um, yeah, I also love and respect everyone at Hasbro. But when I don't get my influencer box, not to worry, I will find which of the toys you canceled from this line. And then I will track it down in foreign countries. I would like to clarify that I just in this podcast, I have said that I will keep product that people send me and like I'll rip people off. And also the fact that I'm very easily bought. I would like to clarify that I'm not going to be doing any of the stuff there when it comes to people sending me merchandise. I don't want I'm not about that life. And also, uh, if I if I don't like something, I, I'm going to tell you I don't like it. But when it comes to this thing, I just thought it was fun. Um, I, the, the only worry again that I have is that you do a tease upon a tease that anticipation builds up even more and you yeah. got to deliver. And that is my concern right now when it comes to Hasbro is can they deliver, especially with that emphasis on the word big, can they deliver in that big way? Um, I question it. Yeah. And that to me is where I'm like a better approach for the future might be bringing in some people who have some expertise in message design, marketing persuasion I'm not saying i teach these things or anything but this is like this was me totally being like i'm gonna neg on hasbro strategies and then I'd be like by the way you want to hey, hire me hey hey <laughs> hey say they gotta bring in somebody that, that that knows ghostbusters too 
Yeah, yeah. You got to bring in somebody who knows Ghostbusters. Yeah, yeah. you know, that would be really cool. Like, a, a couple people know Ghostbusters. Yeah. yeah. Well, especially if you, had, if you had people who were, like, are, were in different countries who could then be, like... Oh, international market, like yeah, Canada. There you go. Yeah, That's exactly. Because okay. you got to, you know, you got to figure that out. You have to figure out how you, how you put some poutine with the ectoplasm to make people buy it in Canada. Because that's the only way people, people, people buy things in Canada is if they come with poutine, I think. I think that's what I've heard. You might, you might have better ideas. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, poutine, and uh, you know you can't get your 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 burger undercooked. It's got to be at least a medium. That's right. We've we've learned yeah. this from the Jim Cornette podcast. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Now we're letting people know that you and I both listen to the same wrestling podcast. That's good. There you go. Um, well, again, I'm sure that sounded very negative to everybody. If it did, I'm very sorry because I'm again, I'm not like upset. Like I'm not angry. I'm not like I'm not going to buy something. I'm not like trying to openly said comment out to the world to be like, you ruined my childhood Hasbro. Like they didn't. It just, I, I would like, I would like to not feel worked. That's my one request <laughs> moving forward <laughs> would be just don't make me feel worked. If you're going to do this thing of marketing to your own audience this much, don't manipulate them, make them feel like they're part of what's going on as opposed to like they're on the outside of it. Cause it just doesn't feel good for some people, but I digress. Um, Anything else you want to say about that? Any other comments before we move on from from beating the hell out of that video <laughs> with the conversation? Uh, 10, 27, be there. Yeah, I mean, we'll be there. Yeah. I, I'll be there. Be there. I, I'll be at my house, rather, rather than anywhere, because it'll be... <laughs> it's, it's not happening anywhere. Just be in front of a computer on 10, 27, and I'm sure there will be all kinds of different things that are talked about. I don't even, I don't even know if that's a special day for them, if it's just like a day they picked... Do you? I have I have no idea the origin behind it. Yeah, I, I don't either. Got I'm no like, clue. They're like, it's the day we bought Kenner <laughs> 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 and, and got the greatest IPs in our holdings. We refer we to this. A lot of people refer to it as like the dark times. We kind of wanted to put like a positive spin on it. It's fine. Don't worry about it. I love you, Hasbro. <laughs> I do too. I, I as much as I frustrate, get frustrated by things. It's not like I don't appreciate what they're doing. Um, for those of you out there who are into puzzles. And who like the Ghostbusters Firehouse, um, Ravel, they now have a like new Ghostbusters Firehouse 3D puzzle set, which I don't. Did you did you say that it was just revamped in your article? Because I don't know that I saw this before. Yeah, they, they released like I want to say back in February, there were some photos that kind of came out and then it was like at like a, a toy event. Uh, the first images that they released, uh, it was very much just computer generated shot which i mean this one still is too but it was very much the ecto from ghostbusters afterlife like it didn't have the side ladder oh, yeah uh, on the one side and it was like rusted out and it had the ghostbusters afterlife logo on it, like the rusted out logo the dirty one um so now they show this one and it's clean and it's very much more in the tone with the 84 style um and then this was also the one too that when they first showed the firehouse the firehouse was a mirror copy of the playmobile firehouse all right so this is embarrassing I just went back to look at your coverage of this. And yeah, do you know what it says? Like in the second paragraph, what's that? Jim Maritato of the extra plasm podcast. Provided there you this go. Tip. <laughs> he presented it to me. So you're right. I did. Cause we, this was back in February and I, I did. As soon as I opened your articles, we we're talking about this. I'm like, Oh, right. This was the puzzle that looked to me like somebody had stolen the, the, the Playmobil firehouse yeah. and yeah. made it into a puzzle, but it's completely redesigned now. Like, it doesn't look like that at all. You can tell, like, it was used as the main base. Like, there is definitely inspiration with how the floor structure is, and, like, the third floor and all that. Um, but, yeah, the, the actual detail now has been changed totally on yes, the interior. Significantly. I mean, you've, got, you've got lockers. You've got Janine's desk, uh, you know, Bankman's desk, uh, Egon's lab. Uh, you even have, like, a little, like, Ghostbuster 2 Slimer in there. Yeah. Um, the, the eating quarters where, like, they're eating, uh, well, they're eating the food that was paid with, you know, with, like, the, the last Chinese the petty food. cash. Yeah. Chinese food. Um, so like this looks fantastic. Like it looks really good. Yeah, it does. For a puzzle, it looks amazing. And the price point on it is like not horrible. It's like it's like 49 bucks. Is that I think yeah. that's yeah, it's, it's like I mean it's just puzzle pieces. So like it's not like hard plastic or anything like that. It's not like a Lego build where everything is individualized again, like hard plastic. Uh these are just puzzle pieces. Yeah, um they're so, like twenty nine ninety nine euros, which is like forty bucks ish, right? Yep. So um, that's not too terrible and they are separate, but you can put them together. So why well, no, not the both? firehouse comes with a smaller Ecto. Oh yeah. Okay, so right. the, 
the regular Ecto, you'll see there's a, a slight change with them. Uh, the regular Ecto is larger in scale. Uh, but yeah, when you buy the Firehouse, you get a kind of, I guess, minimalized version of that Ecto-1. Yeah, yeah. Looks a little different. Uh, it can fit inside the Firehouse, uh, so you can have it for play or display, whatever you prefer. That's awesome. I want this. Mm. Um, as much as I'm like, I don't need more things. Um, this is what's nice about puzzles is that if you decide that you don't want to display it anymore, just take it apart. Yeah. <laughs> you totally. put it in a box and then you can enjoy putting it back together again later if you want. Um, yeah, I guess that's true of all the Lego kits too, but who does that? Uh, like, I mean, but you're talking like this builds like, I think it was like 90 minutes to two hours is what they're saying. The yeah. Lego build. I mean, that's, that's a day build <laughs> nonstop. So that is a build that I got 95% of the way through and then somehow managed to drop things on the floor and needed to start over. And so mine has been sitting in a box, <laughs> like oh. a bunch of disassembled pieces. <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it, but yeah, there's 130 pieces in this set and it's designed for kids like age 10 and up. So, um, nothing too complicated here. And I, I definitely like this. I'm something I'm going to take a look at because it would just be a nice way to spend an afternoon, you know, just totally just a totally chill, relaxed, no screen media way to spend an afternoon. Build so, it for an hour, stare at it for three. It's going to be great. Yeah. <laughs> then because it's a puzzle, destroy it, smash it to the <sighs> ground, get your brand new Hasbro Haslab four foot tall, $700 Stay Puft figure. None of that's real. What if they do turn around and they're like, if it's like something just freaking ridiculous, it's like, here's, yeah, here's your four foot tall Stay Puft, just <laughs> obscene, insane. And I mean, okay, you're like, that's crazy. But think about it. They can MacGyver where the arms and the legs fit into the rotund stomach. Sure. So you could pack this guy and you could just make him big and hollow. You could, you could do it. You could totally do it. Well, what they're really going to do probably because they own the Transformers, they're probably going to make a transforming Stay Puft. They're not really going to do that, but that's also, <laughs> uh, we didn't even talk about it. I mean, an Ecto one would make sense. <laughs> well, you know, okay. Like not that we mean to bounce back to that conversation, but you actually are putting words like taking words right out of my brain because I thought the mm -hmm. same thing, which is we didn't even talk about the potentiality for an Ecto one. But part of the reason for that is because I firmly believe it's not that no, I, I just, no. I know everyone who listens to this podcast knows that what I really want more than anything else from Hasbro is a one twelve series Ecto one that all my figures will fit in. That really rolls, but I don't think I'm ever getting it. I really don't. I think that I, I, part of me wonders if there's some like GM restriction on you're not allowed to build a car in one's in one twelve. I, I, I don't know. Like, but you know, to be fair, a lot of dealers for many years did sell like diecast models of their own cars and stuff like that mm -hmm. you could collect. So, and I believe that there are some Cadillac models out there. So maybe that's why. Who knows. Well, let's talk about video games for a few minutes because we kind of talked about toys. Um, there's a lot going on in video game land. Like it's I feel like we should we could just like if a movie didn't happen, we would just switch over to becoming fans of a massive video game franchise mm -hmm. because yeah. there's so much yeah. going on. Um, there's apparently a new skin that you reported on for Ghostbuster Spirits Unleashed uh, that I believe was for the Howler Ghost. Is that right? Uh, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the necro howler, what's it called? the necro howler. Yes. Yeah. So now if in you're... game, another, another Twitch drop. Yeah. So I was, I was surprised they did a Twitch drop like this close to when we were going to get a DLC. Like they just did another drop a week beforehand, but I don't, again, maybe that's the intent is to build hype for the drop or, you know, the DLC that's coming. I don't know. So Ilphonic, they know the importance of a good drip. Yes, you're right. They do. Yeah, um, they're, they're good. They're, they're very good at fine. that. So I, again, I don't feel, but again, I don't feel work there. <laughs> no, no. And, and I mean, the, the, Ecto, the Ecto Howler when it comes to, I'm just talking about a drip of content and, and yeah. not, not teasing, just content. Um, and I mean, there's not really too much. I mean, the Howler, it's, it's the same ghost that we all know. Um, it's just, they've got that really funky kind of black and uh, black and blue design for this time around. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, they're pretty cool to use in game i mean they look cool um i'm kind of curious by the time this game wraps up if all the ghosts are gonna have gonna have these kind of necro skins eventually or if some will be left out but uh at the rate they're going right now I'm, I'm i'm digging the look of these yeah um and i have to admit that i have not chased down all of these different skins by sitting on twitch to get them uh mm -hmm. but for those who are collecting all the skins you can go out and get 
this one until November 1st uh, by watching participating streams of Spirits Unleashed on Twitch. And apparently there are three different variants. And for every two hours you watch, you can unlock one of those variants. So I think that's pretty much the same way they did it for the last few. So um, if you do it on Halloween, actually, you get extra benefit. Oh, do you really? Yeah, it's extra spooky. That's fun. Uh, yeah. Well, there you go. It's also the last day, the day before the last day. You can exactly. Do so exactly. There you go. Um, that's probably less exciting than what is to come for Spirits Unleashed, because we all know Ecto Edition is dropping for Switch in like two days. Um, mm -hmm. And presumably we're going to see the DLC, I think, this week, given that it's kind of been teased pretty heavily that it's coming out. And I believe there's now preview images of Sam Hain in the game. Uh, mm -hmm. although I don't know if they show him as playable in the game. I've seen a lot of folks in the Ghostbusters Spirits Unleashed discord asking that question of, will he be a playable ghost or will he be like nameless from the first storyline where you never got to play that ghost? You just got to interact with it in the story. Um, so I guess we're going to see, cause I don't think we've been given insight yet as to whether or not that's a playable ghost or just one of the story. I and cannot imagine you couldn't like, I mean, yeah, I would tend to think so. Every other ghost they put out. How would you do out, a DLC? Like, he's got to be part of a class. Like, I, I cannot imagine them just turning out a DLC and like, hey, here's this class. Oh, and here's Sam, Sam Hain that, you know, you can't play as. You know, he's right. just tied to this one mode, um, especially with Halloween and everything afoot. Like, yeah. Yeah. You got to be able to play as him. I would tend to think so, given that all the other ghosts that have been teased to us, at, you know, as they've been released, have been playable ghosts. The Muncher ghost, mm -hmm. right? The Bug Eye ghost. Those were all playable models as opposed to hey, here's a new DLC component, but uh, or rather a new story component. But we also know that there's supposed to be like some voice acting that we were told yeah. about from this new one. So presumably there is some sort of new story. I don't know. Um, I'm excited, though. I got to be honest, like I I really as much as I talk about how I would like the QC to be better on this game, sometimes the idea like every time they add something new at a story level to it or a new ghost level, I come back to it and I'm excited about it. So. I'm really looking forward to this. I'm hoping we're going to see it this week uh, because that would give us the opportunity to kind of enjoy October and the decorations in the firehouse in the game alongside some new stuff. So, I mean, how can it not be the fact that, you know, you, you've got Sam Hain being marketed so heavily for the, the Ecto edition and then, yeah. you know, like to have the switch users get him first or, you know, release the switch version and he's not available. Um, yeah. I mean, Elphonic hasn't said anything, but we, we totally have to see this DLC this week. Yeah, I would agree. Um, so probably this will be the thing where like I put out the podcast on Tuesday and then on Tuesday afternoon, you're releasing a story about how this is out. And then I'm like, damn. Well, actually, <laughs> let me tell you, let me check my emails here and see what I got. Uh, no, I'm, I'm really pumped for this. I'm also really excited to see what else they turn out. You know, if it's going to obviously we're going to be getting a new map, new ghost type. Um, as always, I'm really curious about the gear shells. Uh, they've been one of my favorite gets when it comes mm -hmm. to any of these DLCs. The answer, the call, you know, stuff, the, uh, the extreme ghostbusters, the real ghostbusters. So I'm really curious uh, as to where they go from here, uh, whether or not we get something maybe afterlife related or maybe something that is unique and kind of created in house by Alphonic. Uh, I always thought that the real ghostbusters packs would have been like, no, sorry, real ghostbusters Kinner packs mm -hmm. would have been such a cool one where you could choose the different colors, the purple, the blues, all that. But, uh, yeah, that's again, that's been one of my favorite aspects of any of the DLCs is, is those gear shells. I know it won't happen because it would require some pretty insane licensing magic, but it would be kind of cool if they did a Lego set of packs in that game. Like that if you oh, could, yeah. all your gear was just little Lego bricks. <laughs> you know what you, well, I mean, you could do it in the respects, I guess, that maybe, maybe small parts of it being Lego or, I mean, at the same time too, I mean, you know, you may even have it where. Uh, you know, you may Chinese manufacture it up and just call them building blocks or building bricks. Right. <laughs> yeah, you probably wouldn't given the Ghostbusters license and, you know, their their connection to Lego. Probably not the best idea, but you, you could maybe you could maybe do something. Work yeah. that in. You could do a building block um, pack. That would be interesting and fun. So, yeah, um, I'm excited about that. I'm, I'm really and I'm excited to see the game coming to another platform for a new like line of a new group of players. Like this is a mm -hmm. game that hasn't existed on Switch at all. And so that it's going to come out on a completely new platform for folks uh, who are going to come into it as new um, expands the, the community of game players a bunch. And I think potentially changes up the dynamics of who is playing the game a bit um, to me. Yeah. 
the Switch is a, a far more accessible console that people are playing. I, that, you know, I think younger kids are playing more of. It's an on-the-go console, etc. Whereas mm-hmm. I think a lot of the folks who are playing Spirits Unleashed, at least over the last year of it, that while I've been playing, have been sort of more um, hardcore online gamers. That makes sense. Yeah. Like people who are into asymmetrical shooters, people who have PCs with video cards that are really good and capable of doing things like streaming. <laughs> so like I, <laughs> I think it will be interesting to sort of see how this game is received by folks on a completely different platform with a more casual gaming, uh, you know, sort of. Uh, yeah. community you know also i mean you were saying like younger age there's that visual aesthetic to a spirits unleashed where i mean it has that kind of like Fortnite vibe that style yeah. to it um which could bring in you know a whole new demographic of player um yeah i'm i'm excited to see it grow i'm kind of curious too if we're ever going to hear news about the uh, the steam release uh considering we're heading up to a year now since the game launched Right. And usually those like exclusivity deals are like a year with like Epic mm-hmm. and everything. I mean, who knows? Maybe it'll stay an Epic exclusive, but I'm kind of curious if we're going to hear anything about a Steam launch, um, you know, the next couple of weeks, next month or so. Yeah. Um, it would be interesting to see how the community would kind of continue to expand if that were the case, given how there's some folks out there who are very opposed to Epic games and who just won't I mean, install anything that they sell. But I mean, that's not that me. Be, I'm that, not that hard line. That'd be big news for some. You know what? Maybe that's the crossover announcement. Hasbro, they're going to come out and they're going to be like, hey, we got big news. Spirits Unleashed, baby. Coming to Steam. <laughs> That's it. And we're going to Has- release a, we're going to release an action figure of, of uh, what's that? Uh, Half-Life guy. That's Steam, right? Yeah, we're going to dress up as a Ghostbuster. We're yes. releasing a 22-inch tall nameless figure. At which they're point somebody get goes, into- isn't nameless invisible? Yes. <laughs> they're just going to get into gaming pcs now and it's going to exclusively run steam and that's it and it's going to be ghostbusters themed and that's our announcement yes there you that's go it. that's the plan that'll work there you be um well i'm but i'm very excited to see what's going to happen with spirits unleashed as much as i just said like i want to see them market things better and not from bedrooms um mm-hmm. i feel bad now i feel like i've been mean no 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 <laughs> i mean, I mean it, when it comes to when it comes to anybody doing like all streamers are different. And, uh, I mean, you, you have some people out there that, you know, you go on Twitch and they spend like, God, you know, five grand for their background and just, right. just do crazy LEDs and everything. And then you've got somebody else who has like, you know, 300 million viewers or subscribers. And they're just some dude again in, in their bedroom. Uh, and I gotta say too, when it comes to some of these, um, you know, higher companies doing that style of stream, it does make it where those people feel more approachable. You know, they, sure. you, there's not really that kind of barrier. Um, so I can definitely see it almost kind of breaking down and almost like a mom and pop shop type thing where it's just like, Hey, they're like me. So I can, I can get that. Yeah, I, I get, I understand. I get that aesthetic to it. Um, you just don't want to see their bed. No, it's not even, it's not even that I want to see their bed. It's just, you don't want to, you don't want to think about, uh, (laughs) team members of Ilphonic, you know, that's where the magic happens. That's what you don't want. You don't want to think about, all right, that's partially true. I don't want to think about that, but that's not what I was thinking about. (laughs) That's where they bump uglies. But I meant more that I just, when I when was saying it, I want people to market beyond the known contingent of people who you already know your audience. Um, I agree. You know, I want Ghostbusters so, to grow. Yeah. So that's why it excites me to sort of see the Ecto edition happening. You know, it's like, okay, cool. We see after a year, um, Spirits Unleashed is still alive. It's still kicking and it has growth potential to it as opposed to being like, hey, is this a dead game? <laughs> Which, you know, I think is a question you hear asked a lot these days about online games that kind of get started up and they make it a year and, and they just kind of stop receiving updates. So is it an uh, evil dead game? Zing. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's a good example. An evil dead game or um, what was the other game that people were upset about at one point? I think Predator people were upset about or something. So, yep. yeah, I don't know. Um, there's a lot of games. There's a lot of games out there, kid, with a lot of IPs. <laughs> I do like the fact though that Spirits Unleashed is releasing uh in the same week that like Sp- like Spirits Unleashed for obviously Switch. Um the same week that like Super Mario Wonder is coming out, like the biggest <laughs> game release this year for Nintendo. It's like uh, okay, they could have yeah. planned that a little better. You did but stack again, yourself that, against that deck pretty hard. <laughs> that <laughs> is them though getting to that one year exclusivity or well, that one year anniversary and they want to make a big deal about it. Yeah. So it's really just Mario coming in and you know 
it's his fault. Stomping his big elephant trunks down. That's the new I've, gimmick with the new one. I want to say this elephant. real quick before we move on, because it's, it's something that most people have not, I've talked to have not recognized. Have you noticed this, that when you shoot the drudges in Spirits Unleashed, some of them have an Easter egg? No, I don't think when so. When you shoot the drudges and you blow them up, some of them go, whoa, 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 whoa. And they sound just oh, like little Luigi. Oh, little Luigi boy. Right. They sound like Luigi and war. Like they sound like, I'm like, well, how does nobody notice this? Like no one's like, <laughs> no one else. No, anyone else I've talked to like, Oh yeah, they do do that. I'm like, yeah, like that is, we've made this joke about Luigi's mansion and the ghost busting adventures of Luigi. And then you've got this sort of like audio Easter egg. The drudges make when they get shot, which is very close to that laugh. So, um, yeah. There you go. Charles Marnet Martinet, he uh, he knew that uh, his his role at Nintendo that was going to you know take a step step back, so he started doing other roles and yeah. He brought Mario and Luigi to Spirits Unleashed. Came in Spirits Unleashed and he was like, "Wow, wow, 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 wow." That's all he does. He just walks into room. Rooms. It's, wow, the, only wow, line, wow, it's wow. the only line he's got yeah. now. That's it. They took the yeah. rest of them away. He can't he like use the, the others. others. He's at like Nintendo Food Court. Would you like some 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 extra Jello there, Charles? Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> Outside of Spirits Unleashed. Uh, it looks like we also are pretty much 10 days away from the release of, uh, Ghostbusters rise of the ghost Lord on VR, uh, for meta quest and a PS VR system. Mm-hmm. Um, I think this is neat. I, I don't know that I'm going to end up playing it because it's a lot of money to buy a meta quest system. I know that you were trying to talk me into it, but they're nice. Like gonna the, happen. the, the newest one, the quest three, I just, I just grabbed and, um, it is, it is really cool. It mixes, uh, you know, real life with virtuality, the whole AR, VR type thing and, um, augmented reality, I guess is, is what they call it. I don't know, but whatever it is, uh, it, it's done really well. There's like a little game it comes with where you've got like aliens crashing through your walls and you do like a whole like 3d scan of your, your living room and, uh, they can hide nice. behind like the couch and the table and everything. And a little rocket ship lands like on your couch or, or table. Um, so it, it's, it's really cool. The tech's really neat. Uh, I'm kind of curious exactly for the mini puff mayhem mini game. That's exclusive to the quest three, how that's going to play out. If it's going to be anywhere near as cool. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited for it. I'm not expecting anything mind blowing. I'm expecting really just a fun VR shooter with the ghostbusters license kind of slapped on top of it. I know that may sound bad, but I'm not <laughs> expecting it, it. It's the fact that it's, you know, it's, we're starting a new franchise. We're in San Francisco. Yeah, it's so removed from that New York Bill Murray Ghostbusters aesthetic that I'm coming into it thinking just, OK, I'm going to bust ghosts. I'm going to wear a proton pack. I'm going to use a Neutrona wand ghost trap. I'm going to have those staples. It's going to look different. I think as long as you come into it expecting, you know, something different, I think you're probably going to have a good time. But I've, I haven't played it yet. I'm hoping it, it works well. I'm hoping that, uh, you know, for people who want to do single player and you can apparently do that. And there's like, I guess like a little ghost character that helps you out as you're playing through, uh, that you'll be able to do that. And you'll get a, a, a similar experience when compared to playing online with like three other players. Yeah. Um, I, I think that you may be right in that it's kind of like a ghostbusters branding on a VR shooter, but I also think it's interesting how much work they've put into like so far of showing us different equipment that's in the game, mm-hmm. you know, uh, well, even those that was- really re- Sorry, again. one of the first pre- one of the first press conferences they had about the game was uh, they mentioned like in dreams, the developer, they said Sony came to us and they tasked us with reinventing the Ghostbusters, you know, doing different things and uh, trying to do something different. So. I, I think, again, as long as you keep your expectations in check and, you know, we're not going to be going to River of Slime and we're not going to be taking on Ghost of the Gozerian, the mini puffs, apparently, though, they, they make the track to San Francisco and apparently Slimer is going to make the track via DLC eventually. Uh, and I think that that could be an area where when it comes to DLC, maybe you could dip your toes a little bit into that actual franchise lore. You know, maybe you could have like a Sedgwick hotel or, you know, uh, or at least like a, a hoity toity style you know, hotel or dining room or, or what have you. But, um, I don't know. I'm, I'm really hoping this could be a big success. And I think that as you're talking about expanding your audience, I think when it comes to PSVR players and MetaQuest players, this does have a pretty good chance of being just a fun pick up and play a game, especially right. for the kids, especially for the families. I mean, when it comes to the play test, that was one of the biggest underlining things people were saying was 
it felt like a casual gaming experience mm -hmm. for the families for kids and that's something that i think ghostbusters really needs i agree um i think that one of the challenges of spirits unleashed is that it is a game that is not really designed I mean, it is designed with kids can play it but the community of game players is far more folks who are adults than the team yeah. speak it certainly is uh, and when you tend to run into kids it's like um on middle of the day uh, on a weekend right like not mm -hmm. when they're in school obviously and stuff is when you tend to yep. see them in the game i think more than other times but it's not really an ecosystem it's kind of like set up for them and this is the other part of it i think is kind of interesting is that spirits unleashed is a ongoing telling of a story that you and i know very well right because it's the story of the original ghostbusters and then ghostbusters and, so, and i guess sort of ghostbusters afterlife even though it's not really talked about that much in that game um this is kind of like hey this is the firehouse after afterlife so all right fine i accept that mm -hmm. but the characters in it they're all characters that you and i know because they're characters that go back to 40 years ago from a movie and that doesn't necessarily lend itself well to newcomers who are like going to yeah. learn a story and develop a relationship with characters who are new. Whereas this sort of a move to San Francisco in a casual family oriented or family light gameplay style mini game driven environment uh, might actually be good for bringing in people who otherwise don't have a connection to Ghostbusters or a deep connection to those characters who are younger. So um, to me, I think it has like potential, I guess what I'll call like um, Nintendo Wii potential, right? In the sense that it like mm. brings in a different kind of game player into the marketplace. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you look at other things out there, like when it comes to Ninja Turtles, you don't oftentimes see a lot of turtle toys showing up in discount clearance spins. It happens, but you don't <laughs> see it nearly as much as Ghostbusters. And I think that's because that they make their reinventions accessible right to the younger you know to younger age audiences and everything they've been reinvented so many times but and you still have the originals to go back on and people still love them and everything um and i feel like ghostbusters they need that to some degree like whether it being uh just a vr game or whether it being a new netflix series or being a new animated movie um i feel like there needs to be not a reset on the franchise necessarily but there needs to be a reinvention where you can kind of grab people's attention that, you know, they, they may not necessarily know who Winston Zeddemore is or who Ray Stance right. is and why does he have this bookstore and all that. You can just kind of grab that those uh, people in. And for people who, who don't like that and they're like, ah, oh, you don't want those fans in the in the, you know, in the fandom. Yes, you do, because yeah, you do. They're going to watch Ghostbusters. They're going to watch <laughs> Ghostbusters, too. If you are, are whining over people that they got into the fandom because of, uh, you know, Ghostbusters 2016 and now they're fans of the first two Ghostbusters don't because that's awesome. Yeah, I, I find agree. That, find that entry point. That's, that's really what Sony and Ghost Core need to do. I think a lot more so is find those entry points for those new fans. Yeah, I, I 100 percent agree. And I think that to some extent, like, you know, not to come back to that Hasbro conversation, but part of the challenge there, right, is like they're attempting to market something without content <laughs> that's new, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's not we don't have the video games. We don't have the comic books. We don't we have the video games. We don't have the cartoons. We don't have the comic books. We don't have the cartoon movie. Like none of those things exist yet. And so presumably like if those things were coming out at the same time right now too, you'd probably have a multifaceted marketing campaign presumably from Hasbro to kind of push yep. that new content for new stories. But, um, you know, I think that's where that VR experience kind of, and to some extent, like even like we were saying, the, the, the move to switch for Elphonic is interesting to me because it potentially expands an audience beyond who we're already talking to. So I don't know. We'll see. It'll be interesting. But if you're not a video game player, now's the time to rekindle that love. <laughs> if you're not playing video games um, and you're a Ghostbusters fan, you are probably missing out at this point, to be real. Um, there's been a lot of bad Ghostbusters video games over time. But I have to say, out of what exists out right now, I don't think any of it's bad. You know? No, no. And I, I definitely cannot see rise of the ghost lord uh you know being bad i mean just just for the gameplay alone like i mean having a vr ghostbuster game where you can blast a ghost and capture a ghost i mean that's something a lot of us has wanted for years and what we've been presented with has been lackluster at best so to actually have something that has a narrative and a story and something you're not going to finish in eight minutes or ten minutes and it feels more like just a a teaser um 
yeah, I'm I'm more than excited. I know yeah. come the the release date, like over on uh, on our YouTube channel, I'm going to be posting random videos and gameplay and all that. I'm I'm really excited to kind of uh, get into this one. Yeah, I'm 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 excited about all these things that are coming out. I think the one thing we didn't talk about video game wise, if you want unofficial get video game news, uh, apparently Grand Theft Auto Online's Halloween event that you have reported on uh, mm. <laughs> includes a uh, drivable stand in for the Miller Meteor Cad- Cadillac, the, the which I think is called. Is it right? The Albany Brigham. Is that what the it's called? Albany Brigham. Yes. Um, yes. So if you're a, if you are a fan of Grand Theft Auto Online, you can now drive a white Cadillac Miller Meteor with red fins. It does not have a roof rack. And it does not have the logos, but it, but you it is you can put a roof rack on. Can you? But it's just it it's luggage and not <laughs> you know gadgetry. It's like you know people's camping equipment. But you can put a roof rack on. You can change out the rims. You know you can change out uh, the, the the bumper and stuff like that. Change the color. You can definitely make it look more ectoey. But as I said in the initial like report, to do that, uh, you've got to you got to level up your character. There's a gotcha. lot of the cooler unlockables you need to put the time in. Um, you just can't buy money on a shark card, you know, their in-game currency and use that, uh, or sign up to GTA plus. I mean, you, you do that, you'd sign up to their membership program. You get the Cadillac for free, which is cool, but you still need to put the time in to get a lot of the really, you know, must have unlockables. Right. Grand Theft Auto, it blows my mind because I remember when it was an overhead 2d driving game. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Not even when it was Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, but I remember Grand Theft Auto when it was like, use a keyboard to drive a little car through a city at a 2D overhead uh, environment. It's like, it's like knowing Duke Nukem before knowing Duke Nukem 3D. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it makes me feel very old, but um, I have to admit, I have not played any of the contemporary Grand Theft Auto games. I, I don't know when I fell off of those, probably after something like Vice City. I didn't have yeah, a console yeah. that played that. And then I just never got into it on PC. So I, I directly remember uh, I, I moved um, from my parents into like my own place uh, with my girlfriend at the time, uh, who's now my wife. Uh, we moved around. It was right at the release of San Andreas. I remember directly watching or playing San Andreas on a television set on the floor. And I was like, <laughs> I, I, I just recall that that was just a, a vivid memory for me. Um, and I loved Grand Theft Auto 4 and, you know, what, what kind of Grand Theft Auto 5 and everything got into. Um, but I, I'm always a Vice City guy. And I know people are like all talking about like the leaks of GTA, like the next one, GTA 6. Um, which some leaks are legit, some aren't, whatever. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about Grand Theft Auto. Why I'm getting into a tangent about it. But uh, I don't <laughs> I know. They, they, there's weird milestones in my life where I remember th- certain things of GTA. Uh, I'm always going to be a fan of it. I always love just running around causing a ruckus and, uh, you know having the cops run after you and the fact that i can now do that in the ecto one well unofficially um it just adds to it and for years whenever i jumped on the pc one of the first mods i always wanted to install in a game was the ecto mod whether it being vice city san andreas gta 4 gta 5 so to have something in there now that looks like the vehicle you don't have to mod um it even has a siren which is god awfully worse than the actual siren but it still has a siren (laughs) um i appreciate that i appreciate that well, we bounced around. We talked about merch. We talked about video games. The one thing we haven't talked about for sure uh, that I know I want to touch on real quick uh, is fan merch stuff for the week. Um, and the big shout out I want to give for this week goes out to uh, Tom Henry and TCU Toys, because if you have not seen this, uh, Tom has been teasing that they have a brand new store uh, for TCU Toys. It's now being hosted over on Big Cartel. And that brand new store actually has some brandy new items in it. Well, not brandy new, brandy new paint. Uh, the existing Ghostbusters line that he's done in three and three quarters has had a limited run of re-releases and repaints. The, the big announcement there that's new is that the um, he's got spectral Ghostbusters and real Ghostbusters paint jobs. So same figures he had before in terms of the little magnet connectors and things, but you can now get them in variants. You can grab those over at tcutoys.bigcartel.com, which is the new website. And the way that works is if you click on the figure, you can then in a drop down box, like select the variant you want. So there's things like the uh, 84 edition and the 86 edition and the alternate 86 edition, which is the Spectral Ghostbusters. Uh, but these are pretty cool figures. I've liked them since they came out. And the new paint jobs are really nice. 
So yeah, really clean. I mean, the quality of the first set, I got mine a couple weeks back. I love them. Uh, probably one of my favorite looking sets in my collection now. Uh, totally unofficial, non-licensed, all that good jazz. Yeah. Um, but honestly, over the past year, what hasn't been? <laughs> right. <laughs> that seems like kind of the thing. Um, but yeah, they, they do a phenomenal job with their figures. Like I said, I love that first set. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to bite with these. I mean, because I feel like if I bite the standard, like I kind of want to get the spectral versions too, right? Like, right. And, and then it just, it just adds up so quickly, but I don't know. Pro- probably next time on the podcast, I'll be here uh, talking about my regret and my bank account balance being $0. <laughs> I'm I hopeful. Them, and the HasLab and uh, Hasbro and all this other stuff. So. Not that I'm saying that I know he's going to do this because I don't, but I'm hopeful that Tom decides at some point to do like a, um, an accessory and head pack, right? Because like mm-hmm. if you have the regular Ghostbuster figures from them already, then you really just need to swap out the head and the hands and the proton pack to get to a spectral Ghostbuster. Arguably, they have different color painted straps, I think, too. But um, I wonder if they made sure all the magnets were the same. Meaning, they were facing the same way because if you got two negatives together, they wouldn't fit. Right. Oh yeah. So that, I know that that's been a challenge of making sure that all of the magnets are in the correct position yeah. to um, make sure everything goes on. I do think that these are not going to have cards. I think that I had a conversation with Tom and I believe that he's decided to um, alter price point and kind of make things more affordable by not producing card backs from this point mm-hmm. forward. So if you have the figures on card backs that you got when he did the first run, those are going to be like your super limiteds at this point because he's not going to do any more of them. But I have to say, I have a set of the prototypes of those. I really enjoy them. They're really cool. Yeah. They have a prominent place living up on a shelf right now. Mine are orange. Also, not having to worry about cards. I mean, it just means you can get the, the figures out quicker, right? Like you're not having to wait for yeah. everything to kind of, you know, yeah. arrive, what have you, depending on how you're making the card backs, if they're in-house or if you're getting them ordered, uh, it just makes the whole process more yeah. streamlined. So. If you haven't picked up TCU Toys figures already, if you missed out earlier, if you didn't get them when they were available in the pre-order, here's your opportunity to pick them up because there is a limited number of them out there already. As just a fun thing I want people to know about, if you want to see a fun video, go over to the uh, go over to Tony Taylor Toys. Now, I don't know if it's on Phantasm Toys' Instagram, but it's definitely on Tony's. Uh, Tony and Brendan went to New York Comic Con this past weekend and this was Brendan's first experience going to New York because he's from Australia. Um, I mm-hmm. demanded that Tony take him for pizza or bagels, or I told me he was fired. I don't know. He was, I don't know what he was fired from, but he was fired from something. But the thing I want people to go take a look at that's awesome is that they got picked up by, you know, other friends of the podcast and previous guests, Ecto one and J because the community is awesome. And so phantasm toys got a ride to New York comic con in an Ecto one. Um, and they very clearly enjoyed this. The video they made is very oh, yeah. fun. Yeah. And I have to say, I was really jealous. <laughs> yeah. So th- I saw everybody's weekend in New York. And as a New Yorker who's always homesick, I was like, I'm so jealous. And then I saw that video and I saw the Ecto-1 like pulling up to come get them. And then the Ecto-1 tearing away from Comic-Con with the sirens blaring. And I was like, mm-hmm. I'm so jealous right now. <laughs> I just want to go yeah. home. <laughs> I, uh, I kind of feel weird in the respects that, uh, like when it comes to the whole, like the Ecto, uh, tours in New York city, like they were, they were asking like, Hey, you want to come down for this? You want to like maybe yeah. you take a tour? And like, I was like, well, you know, depending, you know, the strikes and maybe Sony will do something. Maybe I'll come down and I can cover something at New York comic con. And I kind of just wish I just went and, you know, not, and I was like, oh, maybe, you know, this one thing will, will be the tipping point and I'll go. I kind of just wish pizza and the Ecto. Those are my tipping points. I went down to New York. I have a good time at Comic-Con. I wish that that, that could have been it. Yeah, I agree. So yeah. I don't know. Maybe we'll have to figure out some sort of uh, opportunity for folks to meet up at some point and go and hang out with the Ecto-1 NJ and eat pizza because uh, I've been told I should come out for a tour as well. And I said, I probably won't make it this year, given that I'm 4000 miles away. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. you know, I would like to go out for a future one. I, I I did meet up with Tony though last year at New York Comic Con, and I'm not too sure what he enjoyed more, my presence or being inside the Ecto One. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna garner to say it was the Ecto One, but he can he can answer that next time he's on the show. The other fun thing I want to tell people to go check out this week, sort of rounding up our discussion of the news and wrapping things up, is you covered this that there's a kindergarten teacher 
<laughs> they spent teaching lessons using ghostbusters and there's video yeah. on instagram and tiktok of ms craft kinder underscore kindergarten teaching sentence busters um <laughs> with, with, where the kids are putting together um ghostbusters themed sentences and when they succeed they get like payoffs like animated slimer flying across the screen <laughs> things mm-hmm. um i want to say as a teacher shout out to this teacher good job that's awesome that being said, I teach college, so I think if I tried this in my classroom, my students would probably look at me like I was insane. <laughs> she's like a uh, she's like a social media Miss Frizzle, and I yeah. like that. You know, it's just yeah. like you replace all that magic and nonsense with just Instagram and TikTok. She's got a really good following <laughs> online too. Like she she uh, reshared my story through her Instagram stories, and I was like. I, I saw such a pop from that, like in terms of like viewers and everything. Yeah. Um, like visitors on the website and everything like, man, like she, she's got a huge following, especially on TikTok. Yeah. Um, just doing sharing like lessons plans and, uh, just little shorts and everything. Very unconventional style stuff. It's um, odd, but like, that's yeah. another weird, like that's where I go. COVID working, like not COVID working, but like COVID communication, like working well, because like, that's something yeah. that my, you know, my, my partner teaches high school. And she has friends that she talks to all the time now that are even local. Some of them who she didn't know pre COVID, but the way she got to know them was because of online curriculum exchange. And what you know, funny like, right now is I, I hope it never happens for her, but if her teaching gig ever went South, she could easily just quit. <laughs> she has the social media following now right. where she could get endorsement deals, license, you know, show off stuff. Uh, and she could just create online lessons plans and such like that online. Like she's got that install base. And I mean, that, that that's awesome. But yeah, obviously her thing is, is the kids, which is great for her. And also the fact too, that, you know, sharing these ideas and, and, uh, sharing again, these concepts and kind of these, this out of the box thinking when it comes to getting children engaged, getting them into, you know, involved with these things. And, um, yeah, I mean, my hat's off to her. Uh, it's, she, she's there wearing the proton pack and a pair of ecto goggles and yep. got the ghost trap over like on like a chair. Uh, she's all in it. And I mean, she even I'm pretty sure she says I she, she doesn't change the song around too much. So she's trying to, uh, you know, to make sure these kids know how to write a, a proper sentence. And she's like saying, I ain't. She's including <laughs> ain't. And people like question, like chirp on the comment section. She's like, well, the song's so iconic. How can you change it? Right. Like seriously. <laughs> so I just imagine some kid going home and like, they're like, you want some peas with your dinner? And she, I ain't eating that. Where'd you pick that up? <laughs> I ain't, I ain't afraid of no peas. I ain't eating no peas. <laughs> and like, ah, uh, Miss Craft. Nah. Uh, I, I, I do think this is pretty cool. She does have like a following of like 633,000 people on Instagram. Um, you know, but so th- this is what I'm saying is like for some teachers, this became a way to uh, to operate during COVID was to share resources, share videos, et cetera, and it help them to build a platform. It's kind of wild, but um, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I, I, it's something that <laughs> there's she has other additional videos. You scroll down, there's like she's got another video with Stay Puffed, et cetera. So it's an ongoing thing where she's incorporating Ghostbusters stuff into the lesson plan. And I just think it's fun. So she, she teased, she teased her Ghostbusters video better than Hasbro teased theirs. I will. Hey, she was I'm like, here, here's Stay Puffed. Yes. Well, I think that more or less covers the headlines of the week, which is mostly what we were going to do today. Cause you were of course the expert on Ghostbusters headlines as the person who produces Ghostbusters news. But, uh, I do want to tell folks that if they aren't going and watching your Halloween countdown videos, that they're missing out on a lot of cool and fun stuff. Um, Thank you. What's your latest thing you're doing? You're doing with that? Uh, well, I'm, I'm actually just about to head out the door right now. Uh, we're going to be doing a video. I've got a couple things left to do this year, but uh, we still need to do the Ecto One Inflatable from Halloween Costumes. Gotcha. Uh, every year they, they partner up for these, and they do like they usually sponsor like five or six videos. Um, so kudos to them. Uh, but we also have the, uh, <laughs> that rather ridiculous terror dog costume. Uh, <laughs> there's going to be a video of that. That's going to be the next one, which I'm hoping to get up in the next day or two. Nice. Um, we're legit going to be filming it within the hour and, um, you know, uh, things may get a little humpy from, from what I hear. So that's, I'm, I, I'm excited for all the wrong reasons for this video. It should be, <laughs> so, should be, it should be a fun one. Should be an entertaining one. But uh, yeah, there's those still left to do. Uh, I'm still building the real Ghostbusters Proton Pack, a 3D yeah. print build. I've only released one so far. I still got at least two to three more videos, maybe at least two, 
maybe I'll push to four. I don't know yet. But um, yeah, that, that should probably square away this Halloween countdown outside of like, you know, usual videos, Fan Mail Fridays. Um, I've got a few more things I think on in, coming to in the mail that I'm probably forgetting about. But um, yeah, it, it's uh, it, it's 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 a fun little fun little series. I, I think as it gets on, it goes on every year. I try and get a little more creative. I try and uh, I don't even want to even say creative. There's there's videos that are very much my standard review videos or standard unboxing videos. But then out of nowhere, there'll just be one that's just weird, you know, just awkward. I mean, finding a reason to put a Twinkie costume on, uh, finding a reason to get humped by terror dogs. Um, it, 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 I, I'm surprised that companies want me to advertise any of their products at this point. <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm thankful that companies like HalloweenCostumes.com and uh, all these other brands and everything. I mean, um Spirit Halloween, I think I'm going to be doing something with them still possibly between now and, and, and Halloween. So I'm, I'm thankful for all these companies support and I'm thankful for people that are watching it. And every year where I'm like, I don't know if I want to do one because I hold myself to like a lot of really weird time frame standards. Like, I don't think people are like, <laughs> be like, hey, where's Jason's new countdown video? But mentally in my head, I'm like, oh my oh. God, I need to make one. I need to make one right now. <laughs> so like every October, I am stressed beyond belief just because I have put these goals in my head that if I don't hit them, it's going to ruin my day. And um I, I need to hit all of them. I understand that. Um and and something is after a year of podcasting, especially like I don't like the idea of taking a week off, you know, or um having a, a recording session that is supposed to happen and then gets canceled, like really throws me off. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm failing at this. And then I'm like, this isn't even my job. Like this is just a thing I do for fun, but for you, like you're out there doing good work that actually, you know, helps you to pay the bills. So, um, and I will say this, I think you do an amazing job of reviewing stuff and people should, companies should definitely send you stuff because you do a great job of making so many of the things that you interact with look fun and awesome. And they generally are, and you don't tend to review stuff that's junk. So there's that. <laughs> they generally are. There are some stinkers in there, but you know, they're, 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 they're generally, they're pretty acceptable. People seem yeah. to like them. Look, if something, okay. the point more being that if something is not necessarily great, you are honest about it. You know, you say, hey, thank you for that. I this thing you. is I think decent, but it's got these fundamental failings and flaws. So, I mean, um, we did the Halloween costumes proton pack. I mean, I, I, I reviewed that. So yeah, that's what I mean. Like, um, I don't mean specifically give it a, that, but it's a good example. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. So I, I think that you should be confident in what you're putting out and, uh, and it's good. It's good content. And I wouldn't tell people to go look at it every week if I didn't think it was enjoyable and good stuff. So. Um, Am I doing yeah. a better job than Hasbro? Yes. Yes. I, I, that's not even said facetiously. So, so Hasbro, if you are looking for a content creator, yeah. saying, does Hasbro yeah, have no. a podcast? What, was, wait, what did you say? Does, does Hasbro have a podcast? I mean, you know, you have a podcast. Oh, I, I, I don't think Hasbro has a podcast. I don't know. I don't know if they want a podcast. <laughs> oh, they'd love a podcast. <laughs> Just get us on the payroll so we can buy some of those props from that well if we can buy some of the discount figures down at the in-store uh, in headquarters See, why do you, no now you're being <laughs> negative about hasbro don't do this don't i'm not do being this. negative ollie's is a fantastic shopping experience that provides discount goods to families all across america which is also not true because there's no ollie's here in california whatsoever <laughs> but gotta reword my all my old articles where i'm like across america across portions of the midwest and some of new england <laughs> <laughs> well despite the fact that i maybe was a little critical about hasbro i had a lot of fun talking to you um and i always do so i appreciate you coming on the podcast and uh, yeah, running okay. through the news this fine. week yeah it was um, okay was, yeah. what's that it was okay it was fine <laughs> thanks <laughs> i mean wasn't good as the previous one. It was fine. Don't worry about it. It's okay. You did okay. <laughs> wow. Yeah, this is yeah. just the way to trigger my anxiety by the end of this podcast. <laughs> what, is this mediocre plasm? What are we talking about? Huh? What? <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> this is happens that I get critical of the Hasbro team. The next That's thing fine. I know, I'm gonna get all Love these you, Hasbro. Hey, your podcast is pretty mediocre. Your podcast didn't do all that much. What new information did you tease this week on your podcast? Hey, weren't you supposed to be cutting up episodes into individual segments for YouTube? Wasn't that a thing you were doing? Y yeah, but. <laughs> but something big. 
But but something big. That's right. The there's reason big, why I'm not is coming. something big is coming. <laughs> oh god. I don't know what that big thing's gonna be. But everybody, tune back in next week to find <laughs> <laughs> Thank you a bunch for coming on the show and uh, rambling through the news with me. I always have fun talking with you. Is there anything else you want? It wanted? was a great time. You're you're wonderful. You're not mediocre. You're extra. Thank you. Extra good. Extra good. Ex- boy. That, it's good that you put the good yeah. after it. Because remember, some people now are like, oh my God, that guy's so extra. <laughs> you're so extra. <laughs> Is there anything else you want to uh, plug out there, pitch out there, tell people to go take a look at, etc.? Ah. Ah. You know, ghostbustersnews.com, Halloween countdown. You've already mentioned, you've already touched on to it. Uh, listen to, uh, if you want to hear a Canadian that has a much better dialect and is better in all sense to me, uh, just listen to last week's with Chris Stewart. If you already watched it, put it on repeat. <laughs> it's fine. Just watch, listen to it again. You're fine. You did a better job. Hey, I'm the mediocre one here. I don't think that's true at all. I, I really do Ghostbusters don't. News, eh. Proton charging, ah. That's what it was. <laughs> I don't think that's true whatsoever. Now I'm going to bury myself and put myself in a bad mood for the rest of the day. No, no, no. This is not what this is about. Nobody's allowed to leave podcasts in bad moods. That's definitely not. All right. I'm in a good mood. All right. Be in a good mood. Okay. (laughs) Now now I can leave this podcast. 1027. I got to I got to I'm going to go do international interdimensional cross rep with Chris Stewart. (laughs) A real working man's podcast. What does it even mean? We're a working man. A no holds barred podcast (laughs) podcast. That podcast is big. It's very big. It's very big. It's very yeah. big. Well, I hope to talk to you again again soon about things that are very big. But even if they're not, even if they're just small okay. or medium sized, that's also okay. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I always enjoy talking size. to you. So. It always doesn't matter. Um, well, thank you again for coming on the podcast and being awesome. Everybody, go check out, if you don't already for some reason because you're completely out of the loop, go check out GhostbustersNews.com and take a look at all the great stuff that Jason's producing. Uh, make sure you watch his Halloween countdown videos. And I will say this, having seen some of the uh, some, some earlier previews of your Proton Pack video, like some of your output coming out of your 3D printer, that thing is amazing. And people, if you are at all into building props, like you need to go watch this video because you're going to want exactly whatever 3D printer this is when you're done. Because it's dope. Yeah. So. I'm stupid and I am building on top of the pack. I'm building the trap. I'm building the PK meter, the belt gizmo, the ecto goggles. Um, yeah. If you wonder why it's been like two weeks since my last video, uh, I'm stupid and I can't focus in on one thing and I got to build everything at one time. So those videos are coming. Like I said, at least two more between now and Halloween. In addition to the standard Halloween countdown videos. None so. of that is stupid. All of that is wonderful. And everybody should go and take a look at it because when, it, when you release it, because it's really cool stuff. It's really interesting to see pieces of it coming together. So, well, I um, think you're welcome. Thank I you for think. being awesome as usual and uh, for doing everything you do because you provide <laughs> valuable service and information to the community. And I'm always excited to talk to you. So please come on back again soon. And uh, thank you again. Thank you for having me. That about wraps things up for Extra Plasm this week. I want to say thank you once again to Jason Fitzsimmons for coming on the show and also in general for being such an awesome supporter and friend of the show. Jason's been kind enough to feature Extra Plasm on Ghostbusters News on Tuesdays for a while now, and it's a gesture I sincerely appreciate as it helps to get the guests on the podcast more opportunities to be heard, especially with folks who may not tune into the show every week or subscribe to it. And of course, it's a great opportunity for the show to continue to grow its audience. So Jason, thanks again for all you do. If you're out there right now and you're not following Ghostbusters news on YouTube, Instagram, X, Facebook, or somewhere else, please go ahead and do that. And one thing I want to remind folks is if you're going to make a purchase from Spirit Halloween or Halloween costumes uh, for a Ghostbusters item, go to Ghostbusters news and search for that item and then use the links in Jason's stories when you do it. Uh, If it helps him keep doing what we all appreciate him for doing when people utilize the links in his stories to go make those purchases. I also want to say thanks and congratulations on your first slice of New York pizza 
to Brendan Pierce of Baducci Studios, who provides our logo and visual identity. And thank you, of course, as always, to Vaporwave artist Magnavox, whose version of Ghostbusters serves as our theme music. And lastly, I want to say thank you to you, which I thank the listening audience every week, but this week I want to say thank you so much, like 20,000 times, because apparently I received notification from our host that the podcast has been downloaded over 20,000 times as of the last week. Uh, It thrills me to be able to talk with you all and to connect with folks each week via the podcast, and it always excites me to hear from you. If you've got something you have to share or some commentary you want to provide, you can, of course, always reach me at Extraplasm on Instagram, on X, I'm still there, uh, Extraplasm Podcast on Facebook and YouTube, and of course, via email at extraplasmpodcast at gmail.com. I, again, want to say thank you so much for supporting the podcast because I never imagined that that many people would come along and download uh, an episode you know, not that there's 20,000 people each week, but there's 20,000 downloads overall, which is to me still mind blowing. And as always, I want to remind you, as Ernie Hudson tells us each and every week, try to have fun and always keep on busting. Take care. <laughs>